and a good Friday evening, and we welcome you into Thunderdome. I'm Gary Schofield alongside Mike Basile, ready for another great night of Federal Hockey League action live from the Center Ice Arena in Harrington as we get set for the Delaware Thunder hosting the Watertown Wolves, the first of three this weekend. We'll play tonight in just a few minutes, tomorrow night at 7.05 when it's first responders night here at Thunderdome, and then Sunday afternoon, our first matinee here at uh, the Center Ice Arena as the Watertown Wolves and the Thunder will face off at three o'clock on Sunday. It was a wild week in the FHL this week as we welcome Mike Basile into the booth before we get into the actual play on the ice between these two teams. Watertown kind of flipped the whole league on their uh, rear back on Wednesday when the announcement came down that they were trading the league's leading point scorer, Tyler Urich, to Elmira, the team that they're chasing for second place in the Eastern Division, and in return, they get five players and only one is in uniform tonight. So I think a lot of people are trying to kind of wrap their head around that whole move. Well, you look at that trade and a lot of people say, and that's one of the biggest trades in the history of the league, a uh, league that's been around for 10 years. And now that is probably the biggest trade. Tyler Urich is probably the best pure scorer in the league. I put Ryan Marker, obviously, with your Delaware Thunder right there too. But you look at Urich, he does it all, man. He scores, he's great on the power play. Sure, people could say he's a little more offensive zone player, but there's a ton of players like that. But Urich is a guy that you want in the lineup, you want on your team. He scored two goals against the Wolves when he played in Elmira that night. So it just goes to show, you don't want to give up a guy like that, especially not in division, to a team you see plenty of times during the course of a year. So that's crazy. And the Delaware Thunder now have a new body in the lineup tonight. And uh, no joke, it's a huge addition. It sure is. We're talking about number 33, defenseman Anthony Pisano. 6'5", 285 pounds, will be patrolling the blue line with the captain, Charlie Penns, tonight. They'll be in the starting lineup. Obviously, Pisano's size is what stands out for you when you first get a look at him. But what else do you know about the 30-year-old veteran? Well, I know Pisano. Obviously, you said the size. That's no secret. But on ice, he's very physical, obviously, at the blue line. He's not going to be afraid to stand you up. He's one of those guys who wants you to think twice before you go into the corner. If you get to that corner, he wants you to think, hey, why am I going here with me with this guy coming at him? So he's a big body. He'll pin you up against the boards. He'll play more than physical with you. So he, he's good. He's also got a heck of a shot that people don't necessarily see that much. He's not a huge offensively-minded uh, defenseman but he's got a good shot. He could be very helpful on the penalty kill as well, blocking shots and moving bodies away from the front of the net. Do you know if there's any plan to put him on the power play at all? That I do not know, but I am pretty, pretty, pretty sure that we will see him on the penalty kill. I know we'll see the captain, Charlie Pence, Kieran Devine, probably Brian Dunford, who's a new face for you. Right. Obviously, you've seen him on the road, but not here at the Thunderdome. And Mark Anthony Simonetta as well, who's a forward, a big 6-1 forward. So Delaware didn't necessarily get any additions in trade, but a couple pickups, well, obviously uh, just the first night of the season for Pisano, but for Mark Anthony Simonetta, I think this is a big pickup. I think we're going to see him tonight with Evgeny Demon and Anton Kalinin. Okay. Oh, they get a big body with two of the smaller bodies on the team, but more crafty players of those two. Remember how good that line was doing when Patrick Tundle was rolling before his 12-game suspension. He'll be serving game number three of that tonight. Brendan Young out of the lineup again tonight. He's got one game left on his suspension. No Jordan Clark, Alex Basie. They're still both recovering from injury. One name that you will recognize or a face that you'll recognize in a Watertown jersey tonight is Nikita Sidenko. There was another deal that went down after the big Urich trade on Wednesday. On Thursday, Watertown sent Dustin Skinner who was a player that they acquired in the Urich trade here to Delaware in exchange for forward Nikita Sidenko and Christos Bormanis, who played last weekend with the Thunder after spending some time with Danville earlier this year. Both those players are dressed and will play for the Watertown Wolves tonight. At this point, Dustin Skinner is not, uh, has not reported to the Thunder, so we'll have to see how that plays out. As we uh, look ahead, Aaron Taylor's back from suspension tonight again. Uh, as well as he missed last Saturday's loss in Carolina. And when you look back to the weekend, last weekend that was, with the Thunder at the Thunderbirds, they were coming off a, a solid effort against the top team in the East, the Danbury Hattricks, where they got the split here two weekends ago. Then they go down to Carolina, and if you didn't get a chance to watch that game Friday night, it was about everything you could ask for from a hockey game, except for the heartbreak with six seconds left when Bakur Threw one in from just inside the blue line. Great screen in front. There was traffic in front of Aaron Taylor, who was phenomenal on Friday night. And the Thunder lose that game 3-2 to two in heartbreaking fashion to the best team in the FHL. 
but during that game there was a stick incident with Taylor so he was suspended for Saturday night's game. That meant the debut for the Thunder of Sebastian Damasa Carlson and things did not go great for Sebastian and the rest of the Thunder. Uh, they kind of got blitzkrieged by the Thunderbirds on Saturday night. Final score was seven to nothing. Uh, Damasa Carlson faced 47 shots, gave up seven goals. Uh, the big story there was Kelly Curl, who is a broadcaster for the Thunderbirds, was actually the emergency goaltender for the Thunder and I believe was actually calling the game from the bench. So you just kind of never know what you're gonna get when you tune in to a Federal Hockey League game. But it should be a fun one tonight. We got two teams that uh, have met four times previously. The Wolves have kind of had the Thunder's number, but aside from the last time they met when Watertown blitzed the Thunder here eight to three on a Saturday night about a month or just before Christmas. Might have been just after Christmas. I have to check the date, but anyway. Uh, the games have been close, so I have a feeling we might see kind of an even game back and forth, especially as some new faces try to find their way into the flow of the game on both sides. The one thing you can count on tonight, you've got two quality goaltenders starting between the pipes. So let's do the starting lineups. First for the Watertown Wolves, we'll start up front at center, Derek Boudreaux on the left wing. It'll be Jamie Lucas and then Michael Desjardins on the right wing. On defense, Justin Coachman will play the left defense. The right defense will be Nicholas Calpuzos, who's just back from a stint with the SPHL. He returned to the team Wednesday before the Watertown Wolves lost to the Elmira Enforcers. Kyle Powell, the league's leading assist man, back with the Wolves as well. In the net for Watertown, it's Jeremy Pominville. He wears number one. He's 11 and 12, two overtime losses this season, but kind of throw the wins and loss record out. You look at the numbers, a 377 goals against, a 90 save percentage, and he's played nearly 1,500 minutes this season. Uh, that's the most amongst goaltenders in the FHL. Second in minutes played, the Delaware Thunder's Aaron Taylor. Starting for the Thunder tonight, up front it'll be Taylor cutting on the left wing, Eric Masters on the right wing with Evan McIntosh at center. The starting blue line pair will be the Charlie Pence Jr., the captain, and the new face for the Thunder, Anthony Pisano. And then in goal, it will be Aaron Taylor. He brings in a record of 8-16, a 4.56 goals against, a 9.03 save percentage. And again, he's faced more shots than anybody in the FHL this season, and a 90 save percentage. Uh, he's played much better than the goals against and the wins and losses, will tell you. Uh, so this is normally the point in the broadcast where I would ask Mikey Basile what his keys to the game are. Mike's helping out with the introductions down on the floor, so he'll join us back here in just a moment. So I'm gonna give you what I think Mike's keys to the game would be. One is gonna be keep the puck clear of traffic in front of Aaron Taylor. We hope that Anthony Pisano will be able to help do that. But if you look at the defensive core with the addition of Pisano, and Mike, you also mentioned uh, the addition of Brian Dunford, you add them to Kieran Devine, Charlie Penns, Daniel DeCristofaro, uh, yeah, that's a pretty good group of six, that the, or the group of five that the Thunder are gonna be rotating through. And imagine when Jordan Clark and Alex Basie get healthy, that's a pretty formidable defensive uh, set for the Thunder. And then of course up front, it's gonna be line scoring depth. Since Tundle got suspended and the move, uh, Brandon Contrato back to the front line or the top line with Ryan Marker, uh, some of that secondary scoring has waned. We saw it last weekend as the Thunder struggled with only two goals in the two games again against the Carolina Thunderbirds, the FHL's best team. For the Watertown Wolves, I think it's just gonna be, let, let the excitement of the week kind of calm itself down and let your talented players show that this is an above 500 team for a reason as we stop for the national anthem here at the Thunderdome.
and we are just about ready for face-off. I was doing my best impression of Mikey Basile's keys to the game. Oh. But now that you're back, let's get your real keys to the game. Well, for the Delaware Thunder, Wait, I, I... We'll see how good I did filling <laughs> yes, in for Mike. Yes. Here we go. For the Delaware Thunder, you know, first home game in quite some time. It, it feels like forever for some reason. I know it's only been, been a, a week, week, but it feels like forever. Once again, for this team, you got to stay out of the box early. It seems like... Sometimes they get themselves in a bit of penalty issues, some trouble, and before you know it, you find yourself down one nothing. They haven't been a team that scored the first goal of the game a lot. I'd love to see that tonight for the Delaware Thunder. For the Watertown Wolves, still trying to find that next man up mentality. Obviously, Derek Boudreaux is one of their top guys. They got Atwell as well. There's still a ton of talent on this team. You got the Dejarle twins too. So there's a lot they look to in this lineup, but who's it gonna be? Someone's gotta fill that role. All those goals and points. One thing I think we can count on Good goaltending tonight. Great matchup between Pominville and Taylor. We're underway off the opening draw. Eric Masters will dump it in deep behind Pominville. Coachman is after it. And now they've got it walled against the boards there behind the net as they battle away to a side. Finally, it's poked free to the corner, but pinching in is McIntosh. He gets it back to Pisano, but his shot hits Taylor cutting. Taylor tried to dump it deep, but instead Boudreaux steals that pass. Now he'll try to spin away from Evan McIntosh, but Mack doing a good job on the forecheck. Finally, Coachman is able to play it ahead. It's off the stick of Desjardins and back to center. And Charlie Penns will wind it in. And the Thunder will go for a quick change just 30 seconds in. Behind the net here, Calpuzos will carry it out. Backhand pass through center. Ahead to Lucas. Lucas tried to drop one, but that was blocked by a Thunder defenseman. Now cutting. Takes Desjardins into the wall. And the puck's just in skates. Just sitting there underneath Devine and Desjardins. But finally cleared to center. That pass is behind Ryan Marker, and Vladimir Port plays it off to his defensive line mate there, Cole Sanstabo. Sanstabo now settling things down, but now Municello, he'll force the play there. But Watertown's able to break out as Port carries it across the red line. He holds around one defender, throws it towards the net, looking for Devney, but it missed his stick. It goes behind the net, but Boxel gets to it. Joe Devney now with a line right in front on Aaron Taylor with a backhand. But a good save by Aaron as he kept the paddle on the ice. Now here come the Thunder the other way. Quickly, it's a three on two if they hurry. Contrado, good poke check there by Port. And the puck's behind the net. Marker gets there first. Contrado now fighting for it behind the net. And now just played lazily into the corner. Devney's able to play it off the wall and back to center. That's where Licky will take over. Good to see Bryce Lickey back in the lineup. A lot of new faces as well. Like we said, Simonetta in the lineup yet to see him. But we have seen Dunford, who played just on the road, not here at the Thunderdome yet. And we have seen Pisano already in this game. After Marker retreated, the Wolves go for a change. And now Natras carries it in. Loses the puck, though, and it's still loose behind him. And now Brandon Contrato looks to get it ahead for Simonetta. Here he goes. Walks in. High shot. Rising over the glove of Pominville. And then off the far wall, Contrato plays it in deep. Simonetta gets it back. Now he spins, gets around a defender, still has the puck in the corner, side angle shot, that's a good save by Pominville, rebound by Demon, and Jeremy Gakes the Brad Besky, bread basket save and holds for the face off our first stoppage with 17.44 to go. And there you see what Simon Etta could bring to the team. Speed, and he's pretty big in front, especially when he's playing with Kalinin and Demon, obviously. You see that size a bit more, but I love that play behind the net. He's crafty, and he's very strong on the puck. Yeah, and that quick shot too there from that tough angle. Almost caught Pominville by surprise. A bit of a false start there on the faceoff. So we'll do it over again. Curious to see, too, Bormanis and Sedanko, obviously just on this Thunder team just a few days ago. See how many shifts they get on a new team. Haven't got to practice with Watertown. We'll see what they do. Here's Bormanis here. Carrying it through the neutral zone. Trying to get around Pisano. Anthony stands him up. Puck's still loose in the neutral zone, though, and Vladimir Port will play it back to Sedanko. Another name that you'll recognize, former Delaware Thunder. To Bormanis, poke check by... Pisano, and now Simonetta just dumps it all the way down as he'll go off for a change. Kalinin looks like he'll beat Sedenko to the puck, but instead Sanstabo's there. Now they still fight for it in the corner. Still loose. Demon is able to get it to Kalinin. Kalinin tried to get back to the blue line, but instead Sedenko steals it away, but then that pass is deflected. In the skates of Bormanis, he finally gets it out, but Pisano's got it at the blue line for the Thunder. Simonetta taps it ahead, but Sedenko walls off Kalinin, and he'll just play it back to Sanstabo in the Watertown zone, Vladimir Port, quick backhand pass, looking for Bormanis instead, finds Evan McIntosh, who plays it off the wall to Taylor Cutting, who will dump it into the Watertown zone. Port chases there for the Wolves, and will just fire it around the wall. McIntosh tried to block it, but couldn't. 
and Charlie Penns will track it down all the way behind the Delaware net. I like the way Delaware started this game. They haven't spent much time at all in the defensive zone. They've been very good getting one and out. Only the one shot thus far on Taylor. Sure, it was a pretty good scoring chance, but Aaron Taylor shut the door. Boxel fires that one in off the paddle of Taylor. Now it's loose at the side of the net, and he's got to cover it up. Good job by Devney to pressure the goaltender, Aaron Taylor, who misplayed that off the wall, but we'll get our first stoppage of play in the Delaware zone. Yeah, puck just bounced a little bit there on Aaron Taylor, and that's where being a goalie could get a little scary. Sometimes you go out for a skate, next thing you know, puck's right back on that stick in front of the net, so covers up and gets the whistle. Another crowded house here at the Thunderdome Friday night, and tomorrow's gonna be absolutely packed yes, with don't, First Responders Night. Without question, they've got the special First Responders Night jerseys, which you can bid on and take home with you after the game, so make sure that you're here. Get your tickets at DelawareThunder.com. Shot from the blue line by Coachman goes high and wide, but Derek Boudreaux gets to the rebound. They fight for it along the near wall to Cristofaro. It's in his skates, but they finally are able to play it along. Good poke check right in the slot. Desjardins with a shot. Aaron Taylor with a sliding save, but that's a beautiful shot by Desjardins. Good setup. I believe that was uh, Boudreaux that poked that puck free to make that chance in the slot for Desjardins. Oh yeah, that's Michael Desjardins, and he's got 18 points on the season, and he shows you why there. Toe drag to a great scoring area, and Aaron Taylor just shuts the door. He was a little uh, unwary of where the puck was, but it was under him, and he made a big save for the Thunder. Off the draw, Marker plays it around to Brandon Contrato, through center, but he gets it right onto the stick of Calpuzos, who passes ahead to Desjardins. He'll bank it off the wall into the Delaware zone. Taylor looks to play it there, fires it back around, and it goes off the glass and into the netting, so we'll get a face off to the left at 39. Aaron just wanted to give a, a fan a souvenir for coming out to tonight's action. Well, we played 415 in this game. We've seen, I'd say, one good scoring chance each way. It's been a pretty well defensive game thus far. A lot of chip and chase, but the chasing hasn't been there for either team. No, defensively, both teams have played well. And as you mentioned a minute ago, be, have been able to clear their zone fairly regularly. We'll see if the Thunder can do it again. Instead, Calpuzos holds at the blue line, but his shot's blocked by Municello, and here come the Thunder the other way. Contrato backhands it into the slot, right on the stick of Marker, and an amazing glove save by Jeremy Pominville keeps this a nothing-nothing game. How many times does Ryan Marker get denied from there? Not many at all. He goes back to the bench, obviously a little upset. That's a great scoring chance. Great feed from Contrato off the wall on the backhand. Unfortunately for Marker, just couldn't elevate it enough over the glove of Pominville. You know he's going to shoot. You know he's a shooter, Marker. And you talked about the chemistry between Contrato and Marker when we were here two weeks ago when they put them back together against Danbury and it showed right there. Off the draw, Vladimir Port trying to get out of the Watertown zone. Nice little touch pass there by Sedenko. Nearly got Bormanis, instead it's Kalina the other way. He's looking, throws one in front for Simonetta. He couldn't get his stick on it. That's a good back check by Liam Little, but the puck's still loose behind the Watertown goal. Little gets to it again and gets it to Sedenko. Sedenko will look to skate out, tries to get it through uh, Bunford and he does and the Watertown Wolves are able to dump it in Taylor will just paddle that back towards the blue line and gets it to center Sedenko plays it back to Sanstabos and now Port holds for Watertown will lob pass for Bormanis now it's Sedenko in the circle he peels back off the wall to Port Port kind of fans on that shot but it comes right to Kyle Powell his shot goes high and wide and now Port will pinch in from his defensive spot nearly got stripped by Kalina and threw it right in front of Taylor but nobody was home and now Sonstibus comes in deep to keep the puck alive for Watertown. Good poke check there by Litke. Taylor Cutting takes a hard hit for his troubles there. In the skates at Kalinin, and it goes loose to the Watertown defense as they'll look to clear out. Well, one thing I can tell you, and it's early, I know, but that line of Simonetta, Kalinin, and Demon is going to be very dangerous. Dangerous pass there by Pisano. Nearly turns into a chance for Kyle Powell. Now Devney's got the puck. Throws it in front. Backhander from Powell. Off the paddle of Taylor and goes into the corner. That could have been a dangerous play. As Delaware looked to get out the other way, but the pass too far for cutting. Off the stick of Kyle Powell at center. Kieran Devine plays it further. Masters gets into the zone. Now McIntosh picks up. He gets a good hip there from Marvin Powell. Puck still at the blue line and just out of the zone and the Thunder will have to retreat. They do, Eric Masters will just dump it in behind the net now. 13.49 to go, Marvin Powell gets to that as the Watertown Wolves will look to clear out. Sedenko to Devney, backhands it off the glass and back across the red line, where DeCristofaro touches for McIntosh. His attempt to dump it into the zone went right off the helmet of Joe Devney. But luckily, he seems he's okay, and now Kyle Powell carries ahead for Watertown. It's been still the same way, Gary. Back and forth, back and forth as we get a whistle here as Taylor covers on the chip in from Powell. But 13.25 to go in the first. You see the biggest, biggest 
biggest, the best scoring chance of the game is from Ryan Marker on that partial breakaway, you could say there. But Ryan Marker, when he comes in, as a goalie, you got to be thinking shot. If you're watching film like these goalies should be at least, they, they know Marker's not going to make a move 90% of the time. He's going to just rip it. The glove was up to the task that time for Jeremy Pominville off the draw. Clearing attempt by DeCristofaro is knocked down by Boudreaux. Boudreaux tried to backhand one in front, but that was knocked down by Christo. But he gets the puck back. But then his pass for Calpuzos just a little too far, and it's going to come all the way back down into the Watertown zone. Calpuzos, dangerous pass in front of his own net, but he got it to Boudreaux. But now Marker picks up the puck. To Municello, Thomas fires once, deflected by Boudreaux, and just rolls in on Pominville, and he'll hold for the faceoff. Marker does a ton of things great, obviously, but the biggest thing to me that Ryan Marker does is control of the puck. It seems like he's going to lose it. It's bouncing around. Somehow he finds a way to keep it in at the blue line. Municello doesn't have a great A scoring opportunity. Shot got blocked on the way through, but now an offensive zone faceoff for a line that's looked really good early in this contest. Devin on the draw with Little. Wins it to Kalinin. Kalinin stepped around Sedenko, but then a good play there by Justin Natras to clear it out for Watertown. Bunford for Delaware gives it away to Little in the skates, though, and Demon gets it to Kalinin. He'll walk into the Watertown zone. Stops at the circle and just plays it around behind. Simonetta has it there. Was going to backhand to Licky, but instead played it back into the corner, trying to get Kalinin, and he found Little instead. But again, Demon gets to the loose puck. He takes a bump from Port, and now Watertown the other way. Here comes Bormanis through the neutral zone. He's across the blue line, holds up, throws one in front. It's deflected by Sinenko, and Aaron Taylor paddles that into the corner. Evgeny Demon picks it up. Little's lost his stick. Clearing attempt goes off Bormanis, and Evgeny Demon will try it again. Skating around Bormanis, he gets back to center at the red line. He'll just play it deep into the Watertown zone. Gets a shoulder from Sinenko for his troubles, and the puck comes to Natris, who clears it out, but he finds Kieran Devine in the neutral zone. There's Anthony Pisano, 6'5", 285 pounds. Giving it away to Kyle Powell. Powell in the slot. His shot marked by Kieran Devine, and it goes wide. And then Boxel will just throw it in on net, and Aaron Taylor will cover up again. Boxel, another guy that this team will look to to step up. Obviously, he's up there in the scoring department for this Watertown Wolves team. And he almost sneaks one by Aaron Taylor on a tough, tough scoring opportunity from the corner. Powell, Devney, Boxel. I would say, if I had to gauge the lines, I would say this might be the top line for Watertown. Powell, the league leader in assists. Off the draw, it didn't look like Powell was ready for that. Now we get a whistle, they're gonna do it again. I think do it again. Linesman faked him out a little bit on that one. <laughs> yeah, from the same spot. Obviously deep in Thunder Ice, and both goalies taking no chances here. Hopping on the pucks early. 11.50 to go in the first Taylor cutting jump that time. McIntosh and Powell, now we get the draw. Mack won it, but nobody was home on the wing, but playback by Devney goes all the way to center. Well, Powell will play it across to Natras. Stretch pass by Powell, a little too far for Bogsell. He kind of throws his hands up. Like, what are you doing? Instead, <laughs> Kieran Devine will play it back through center. That goes off the stick of Natras, so this puck's alive. Powell will get there first. He chops it, though, and it goes right into the netting. They're going to say it did deflect off of a thunder stick, so no power play coming. And McIntosh was right there, too. It looked like it went straight up and out. Not sure who would have tipped that. Nobody was really near him as the puck went straight up and out of play. Referee saying clearly a tip. The way the puck was flipping, it almost lends itself to be believe that it was a deflection. Same lines will go at it here again. Powell and McIntosh, and now we get another whistle. The puck was just bouncing on edge when it went, went up and out of play. Uh, that almost seemed like the referee was yelling at the linesman to do this faster. I'm not quite sure if that's what I heard, but that was kind of the sense I got. Off the draw, McIntosh wins it. Bogsell nearly clears the zone. Devney comes away with it for Watertown. He'll carry it around behind his net, throw it back to center. Gets through the red line. It's going to go all the way behind Aaron Taylor's net, where he'll hold it up there for Kieran Devine. Devine forced by Bogsell, and now he'll try to skate out of the zone. Backhand pass ahead for Cutting, and he'll carry it through and into the Watertown zone. Taylor Cutting, backhand shot. That's knocked down by Powell. Clearing attempt goes off the chest of McIntosh, and it's still loose, and Eric Masters is able to play it in deep. Marvin Powell gets to it there for Watertown, but then fans on the pass got just enough of it, though, to get it to Natris. Natris's pass on the tape to Kyle Powell. Powell played in behind. A lot of dump and chase for Watertown here early on. Charlie Pens clears it around, but not out. Boudreau does a nice job to keep it in. Throws it back to Desjardins. His shot goes wide of the net, and it's along the wall, and now Coachman will play it back in deep. Finds Boudreau in the corner. 
Derek Boudreaux marked by DeCristofaro. Backhand pass into Taylor Cutting, but he couldn't clear the zone. Michael Desjardins got it. Throws it in front, but nobody home. McIntosh had Lucas covered there. Now Lucas takes a bump from Pens, but gets it right back in the slot. Boudreaux, nice pass to Lucas, his shot. I think it was deflected, and it goes up into the netting and out of play, but two really good chances there for Watertown and a bit of sloppy play in the Delaware end. It was the Cristofaro who made the play in front to knock down, but yeah, that was the toughest, I would say, uh, time spent in Delaware zone thus far for sure as that puck couldn't get out. Two, three chances they had to clear, and when you don't work it out, that's exactly what happens. Boudreaux and Marker on the draw, they stalemate. Lucas is able to get it back to Coachman at the point, and now it's Boudreaux behind. He'll just play it into the corner. Lucas gets there first for Watertown. He'll hold his pass blocked by Marker, and Ryan will play it around the wall. It's gonna be too far for Catrato, and Coachman will play it back in deep. Boudreaux behind the net. He gets a bump from Munford, and now the Thunder will be able to clear it out, but Coachman gets it at center, and he'll just play it back in, and that deflects off the rafters. I think he might have hit a light before it went into the netting, so we'll get another stop. Another whistle here is that after 9.48 should be the media timeout, so we should get a quick whistle here for the media timeout. Brian Dunford, number 59. I apologize to his mother for calling him Munford here for the last couple of minutes. 9.48 to go. Apparently we're not gonna get that timeout. Face off at center. Boudreaux wins it. Sanstebo plays it across to Port. They've been a good defensive pairing for Watertown so far in the first period. Contrado's pass to Marker. Oh, and he lost the puck. Good back check by Derek Boudreaux. And now a pass on the tape to Desjarlais. He'll dump it in. Derek Boudreaux chases into the corner. Avoids the hit from Litke, but the puck's still loose. And now they'll battle for it along the wall. Bryce plays it along, but not out. Sanstebo at the blue line. He'll fire one through traffic, and it's off the glove of Aaron Taylor. And Municello's able to get it out of the zone. Now he's looking for a change. Sanstebo will track it down for Watertown. Another great chance for the Wolves, and Aaron Taylor makes the save. 9-10 to play here in the first. We're scoreless. Looked like that got tipped in front as Taylor looked like he had it tracked the whole way with the glove. Then it hit the top of his left pad as he forced it away. Sedenko walks in, and he fires one that gets deflected over the top of the net. Now he's got it behind the net, marked by Pence. Spins away from the captain, and he'll backhand it along. He finds Bormanis. Bormanis behind the net. He's marked by Marker. Puck's loose in the corner. Big hit there from Penns on Sedenko. And now Marker's able to pick it up and he'll skate out of the zone. Goes around Little, across the blue line, walks in, fires one, and it goes wide. Pominville missed that one, but it was well wide of the net. Marker again back behind, tried to find Contrato in the circle, missed with the pass, and then a shot from Pisano from the blue line. Goes way over the glass into the netting and we'll get another stoppage of play. And I think now we'll get that media timeout. Puck was bouncing on Pisano a little bit there as it came out and he just chipped it up and into the projected netting. He's got a laugh as he comes to the bench. You know what oh. I like there though? That's, that, that's the play, you know? Not afraid to fire the puck. This is our first chance of seeing Anthony play in person. And in that position with the way that puck's coming off the wall there, that's the play to make just didn't work out for him in that situation, but I like it. That is definitely the play. You see a lane to shoot, even if there's not any bodies in front, you don't want to hold the puck at the blue line, because guess what, if you turn it over, it's coming back the other way, an odd man rush, especially if you're the defenseman sitting at the blue line. So this period's flown by a little bit, only 8.30 to go in the first, haven't seen any penalties, no goals, a couple good scoring chances we've seen each way, but you get the feeling in this game, it could turn like that, don't get me wrong. But you get the feeling that first goal is going to be more than a little important. I don't disagree. And I would also say that I get the feeling that Watertown's kind of finding their stride here in the last two to three minutes. They've had better chances, more offensive zone time. I think this media timeout couldn't have come at a better time for the Thunder. Right. And this line to get back out there, Simonetta, Kalina, and Demon, this line is really dangerous and has been really good in this first start to the period here. And Simonetta's a guy that, you know, they bring in, they don't know much about, but if you take a look at him, he seems like he can bring a lot to this team. He's big, he's physical, he throws the body around, and he also gets to the front of the net. Just for comparison's sake, he kind of reminds me of a more physical version of Brennan Young. You know what I mean? Good yes. hands, but he's got a little more oomph to him. Yeah, Brennan obviously... Not the biggest guy on the team, but Brennan's got a heck of a wrister. It'll be huge to have him back in the lineup tomorrow after he's done serving the suspension. Demon wins the draw to Simonetta. Pens his shot, kind of goes off the heel of his stick and wide. But Kalina gets to it, skates around a defender, but then back checked by Boxel. Pisano with a shot from the blue line. That's paddled aside by Pominville, but Evgeny Demon gets to it for Delaware. He'll play it into the corner as they try to get the cycle game going. Simonetta now over skates, but he'll retreat and pick it up. Gets away from Sanstebo, holds at the circle, fires from a wide angle. That goes wide, but Pisano pinches in to keep it alive for Delaware. 
Kalinin. Oh, tr Miss Simonetta in the slot. Now here comes Bogsell the other way with Devney. Two on one if they hurry. Bogsell pass to Devney. Missed the shot and it goes wide, but right back in the high slot is Powell. He backhands it to Port. Port throws one in front off a skate and goes into the corner. Big time chance for Watertown there. Another shot from Port and that's paddled aside by Taylor and into the netting and we'll get a stoppage of play. You see right there why Kyle Powell leads the FHL in assists exactly why he has a chance to shoot he knows Aaron Taylor's probably going to stop a wrister from the point instead he starts to create the play again too many players don't do that they just take that shot the shift ends they go off but now Kyle Powell not only had a good scoring opportunity there now he sets the second line up Boudreaux and company for a good chance to score as well with the offensive zone faceoff. Derek wins the draw back to Powell at the blue line Lucas to Desjarlais and now Boudreaux and Desjarlais with a little give and go. Michael Desjarlais throws it into the slot. Whiffing on the shot is Lucas as he was marked by Dunford. But Desjarlais has it again in the corner. Throws it in front. And again, Dunford with a good play. Oh, but apparently he was cheating as we're going to get a hook on Dunford that kept Lucas from getting that shot off in the slot. And the Wolves are going to go to the power play. Well, yeah, Dunford just a little bit of cheating there. Not sure. It looked like they just had each other tied up. But Dunford's going to go and sit for two now. And the first uh, penalty kill of the night, we'll see Anthony Pisano. I didn't. I did say we'd see him on the penalty kill. I said I don't know about the power play though. So the power play's been good for Watertown. They're scoring at a 24% clip, tied for the league lead in power play goals with 29. But they've also allowed 10 shorthanded goals on the year. They win the draw and they'll get set up here. Lucas, he'll play the point along with Calpuzos, who holds here. Now it's Kyle Powell. Is there? They'll switch spots. Back into the corner to Lucas. Pal at the top. Calpuzos from the circle. Fires one. It's deflected and it goes high and wide. Not sure if that got Pens or Lucas, but the Wolves have control again. Desjardins on the near wall. Up top to Kyle Powell. Calpuzos passed on the one-timer. Now he'll throw it across the zone to Desjardins in the corner. He'll backhand one to Lucas. Lucas back to Powell at the point. Kyle plays to Desjardins. Desjardins fires one, and I think that got the leg of Pisano before it even got to Taylor. And it's loose again in the corner. Lucas will play it around. Calpuzos has it there. He'll hold up, and his Watertown will set up again with 105 to go on the power play. Little cycle game. Lucas. Calpuzos fumbles a bit, but keeps it in. Now it's Desjarlay at the circle. Right in the high slot. Boudreaux with a shot and a good save by Taylor. But the puck comes right back to Lucas, and they'll try it again. Calpuzos holds. Desjarlay in the circle. Throws it through the slot, but he finds Kyle Powell on the other side of the zone. Now he'll switch spots with Calpuzos. Calpuzos faked the shot, now passes down to Lucas. Lucas back to Powell at the top. Plenty of zone time here for Watertown. No great chances just yet. Calpuzos and Powell will flip-flop again, and now it's back to Desjardins in the circle. Boudreaux in the slot. His shot, I think, hit Lucas in front, went behind the net, and Lucas gets to the rebound. Kyle Powell now at the blue line, 22 seconds to go. He walks in, fires one, save Taylor, rebound, score! Michael Desjardins on a beautiful feed from Derek Boudreaux. The Wolves cash in on the power play and take a one nothing lead. And you knew it was coming, so much zone time for the Watertown Wolves. Finally, the puck ends up on the stick of Desjardins in front and it was Marker, McIntosh, Penz and Pisano who were out there for the minute 40. They were obviously pretty gassed. And the first goal of the game goes to the Wolves. Seventh goal of the season for Michael Desjardins, his first power play tally of the year. The assists will go to Boudreaux and I believe Powell will get one as well. We'll wait for the official scoring uh, from downstairs. But 5.43 left in the first period. Watertown leading one to nothing. Off the ensuing draw to Cristofaro. Carries back into his own zone. Bormann is kind of forcing the play a bit there. Daniel holds and will hand off to Evgeny Demet, who drops it back to DeCristofaro. Looks like he surprised him a little bit there. But now he'll pass it to Simonetta, who just tips it into the Watertown zone, and he'll chase it into the corner. He'll battle with Port. Good poke check there by Little. But Simonetta nearly comes away with it again, and he does. Tries to backhand it along, but Little's there again, but he gives it right back to Simonetta, who's again harassed by Port. Good defense there by Vladimir as they'll battle for it in the corner. It's among skates now, finally comes loose, and Evgeny Demet looks like he's going to get to it as he beats Sanstabo to the corner. Demon holds. Hands it off to Kalinin. Anton tried to get it in front to Simonetta. Instead, it went off the side of the net, and Pominville's going to cover it up. But we're also going to get an interference call here, so it looks like the Thunder, after giving up the power play goal, are going to go to the man advantage. Yes, they will, and it was another good shift from Simonetta, who was very physical, very aggressive, and it's going to be Sanstabo, I believe, who yep. will be headed to the box. He didn't like that call, but he's going to go off for interference. 
with 4.57 to go. So the Thunder power play, which has yet to really find its stride, only uh, scoring at an 18% clip on the season. We'll have Marker, Pens, Demon, Kalinin. Evgeny loses the draw, and Justin Coachman will just play all the way down into the Delaware zone where Taylor will set it up for Pence. Well, that seems to be the problem on the power play. The, Delaware seems to lose a lot of those opening faceoffs, and then it's 15 seconds down the other way before you even get entry into the zone that Marker does now. Ryan walks in from the circle, a shot, and another quick glove save from Jeremy Pominville. I think what Pominville is trying to tell Ryan is uh, don't test the glove anymore, young man. Try the blocker side. We'll see if uh, Ryan takes the hint there with 4.36 to go in the first. It's a one nothing hockey game, Watertown over the Delaware Thunder, one nothing. Game came right just before, as you said, on that power play goal. Let's see what Delaware can do on their power play. They lose another faceoff, and Lucas walks in, skates around Pens, holds the puck. Now it's loose behind the net, and Evgeny Demon's able to pick it up. He'll throw it back to Anton Kalinin, and he'll look to start the rush for Delaware. Across the blue line, gets it to Pisano. Pisano, though, is poke checked there by Calpuzos, and now he'll carry behind the net and just fire it around. It's off the glass and into the netting. So the Thunder will get another faceoff, this time to the right of Jeremy Pominville, who's been perfect so far tonight for Watertown. Well, look where they're putting Pisano, right in front of the net. Not a bad idea at all. So we did see him on the penalty kill. We do see him on the power play. He's going to be a big part of this Thunder lineup when he's in here. Well, we've talked about it all season long. What's the one thing that the Thunder power play has kind of lacked? It's that been that presence in front. Shot from the blue line from Penns is deflected by Michael Desjardins. Goes into the netting. So we'll do it over again with 108 left in the man advantage. 108 to go in the man advantage. 404 to the first period. We are tied. I shouldn't say that. We are down one to nothing, the <laughs> Delaware Thunder. Hey, I was thinking ahead here. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll see if uh, Mike's got some clairvoyance in his eyes tonight. They've got the right puck now and we're ready to go. Little and Demon on the draw. But again, a Watertown win on the faceoff, but not out of the zone. Marker holds it the blue line, gets it to Kalina. Anton. Goes across the zone to Charlie Pence. Fakes the shot, throws it behind, looking for Demon. Kalinin on the rebound. Apparently got the post as when Pominville came across, kicked the net off its moorings, and the puck went over the net. So we get a stoppage of play. We'll get another faceoff in the Watertown zone. It looked like Pominville got the blocker on it as well. That's an absolutely phenomenal save. And Pominville, not the biggest goalie, but he uses his small size to his strength. He's very good laterally as he showed off there. He's been very good tonight. Perfect thus far, 3.49 left in the first period. 53 seconds on the power play, second unit out for Delaware. McIntosh wins the draw to Cristofaro at the blue line. He'll just play it around behind the net. Masters in Natras will battle for it, pinching in his Municello. And now McIntosh will play it in deep to Contrato. Brandon in the corner, look to get things set for Delaware. Thomas at the point, gets it to Brandon, walks into the circle, winds and fires and nails the post. Contrato gets it back in the corner. Holds, drop pass Municello at the point. He'll play it into the corner, Eric Masters. Now Contrato behind the net. Looking, waiting for something to come open. Plays it all the way back to the point to DeCristofaro. Daniel holds, back to McIntosh. 14 seconds on the power play. Contrato now. Tries to get around Michael Powell, gets it to McIntosh. Five seconds left. Across to Municello with a shot. Pominville holds that in the bread basket. No rebound. And we'll keep this a one nothing game. Good shift for the second unit of this power play. Masters with some hard work in the corner, ships it free. Municello with a good shot to finish it there. And Contrato, obviously, with the twisted wrister off the far post. Keeps it a one nothing game. Only four seconds left on the man advantage. Three minutes left in the first period. Off the draw, Anton Kalina gets it back to center. Dunford will play it there for Delaware. Power play over. Evgeny Demon now, across the blue line. He'll wind it, a long shot, but that's an easy save for, for Pominville after he sees it the whole way, and he'll hold on for another stop. And Pominville obviously gonna stop that one as he saw it the whole way from the blue line. No problems there for the goaltender, Pominville. 2.49 left. Same line out for Delaware. Demon, Kalinin, Simonetta. It's Little, Sedenko for Watertown, off the draw, Little takes it away. Good play by Demon, though, to strip him of the puck. And now it's Simonetta. He'll throw one in front. It's in the skates of Kalinin. Divine fires one, and that kind of wobbles wide of the net. I don't know that Pominville ever got a hand on that, but now here comes Vladimir Port the other way. Bormanis got in front of Divine. I don't think Port saw him. 
and he'll just play it in behind the net. Kieran Devine clears the zone back to center. It's Sanstabo as he walks it back into the Watertown zone, and they'll look for another rush. Couldn't get to Little. It goes all the way into the Delaware zone in the corner. Dunford plays it to Kieran Devine. He'll backhand it off the glass, and he finds Simon Etta at center. He has trouble settling the puck down, but is able to get it into the Watertown zone, where Jeremy Pominville will just paddle it along looking for Sanstabo. It's in his skates, but Demon's not able to break it free. And Sanstabo will carry it out for Watertown. Hands it off to Port. Port will loft one through the neutral zone all the way into the Delaware zone, and Sedenko gets there first. He gets a shoulder from Charlie Penns, and Ryan Marker will pick up the loose puck. Yeah, just because they were teammates just for uh, a couple days here doesn't mean they're still friends, uh, Penns and Sedenko. That's the third or fourth time already this period they've met. Penns is clearing attempt a little too far, and Michael Powell is able to play it out for Watertown. Kyle Powell fires it in from the red line. It's loose in the corner. Devney gets there first. Gets it to Bogsell, back to the point. Michael Powell will just backhand it further, but Ryan Marker will carry out for Delaware, looking to break out with Municello and Contrato. Marker across the blue line, his shot's blocked. Natras got his skates in front of that one. It's in the corner now, and Marker still has the puck. Spins in the circle, fires one, and it goes wide. Contrato at the side of the net, trying to jam it home, but that went off of Powell and into the corner. Minute five to go in the first period. Michael Powell has the puck, but Contrato takes it away. He's able to poke it further, though, and now Bogsell has it. He'll play it ahead for Devney a bit too far, and now Bryce Litke gets to it. He'll backhand it down to the Delaware zone, back to center. Bogsell will just fire it back in, but Devney's still in the zone. So the Wolves had to retreat for a second, and now Anthony Pisano will hold behind the net with 40 seconds to play. You see the size of Pisano here as he uh, rushes his way up the ice, and here's Contrado. Good pass to Brandon Contrado, who walks into the zone. Taps it to Marker, side angle shot. Goes off the blocker of Pominville. Now a shot from DeCristofaro from the point. That stopped by Jeremy as well, and now goes loose to the far wall. Coachman plays it off the skate of Lucas, and Lucas and Desjardins will get into the zone and at least play it into the corner. 20 seconds to go. Comes right into the slot. Boudreaux's backhand shot is blocked by Taylor Cutting, and now the puck's loose along the near wall. They'll battle away for it. It's underneath Boudreaux. Cutting trying to get him off the puck, where Boudreaux's just trying to keep it stationary and let the period run out. Five seconds to go. Puck's loose. Nobody sees it. And finally, Calpuzo plays it into the corner, and that'll do it for the first period. There's a good back and forth kind of style for the first 10 to 12 minutes. And then Watertown, I think, had a pretty good five minute stretch, cashing in on a power play, and now we get a little extracurricular activities after the horn. Taylor and Cutting not happy as that puck was shot way after the whistle, up high, and nothing called there. And now some Wolves exchanging words, too as Boudreaux hit a couple cross checks and the official not happy here, but I gotta agree with the Wolves, a couple cross checks to the back of Boudreaux while he was down. Well, without question, in that situation, you know, the puck's underneath Boudreaux, and now Taylor's got some words for some of the Wolves as well. Um, but, you know, Taylor Cutting's trying to get Boudreaux off the puck, cross checking him in the back. If the referee doesn't see the puck, just blow the whistle. And I think that's <laughs> what Kyle Powell is saying now. Like, why not just blow that play dead if you're not going to call a penalty? And I think that's why the official was so frustrated. He said, I'm already talking to one of your guys about it. I don't need to hear it from everybody on the way off. But I do understand the frustrations there. You could have saw a call. You could have seen it go either way there. Nothing malicious there. But if the puck's under you and you're on the ice, you're going to expect to take some hacks and whacks. Without question. And uh, that brings the first period to an end. Only tally of the first period is by Michael Desjardins on the power play. His seventh of the season. And the Wolves lead one to nothing. Uh, overall, your thoughts on the first period, Mike? Well, you know, Delaware had a couple good chances. Unfortunately for them, they were unable to cash in, and on a good chance for Watertown, they were able to cash in. I know it's pretty uh, cut and dry, but that's how the first period went. One team took advantage of their good chances, and the other team hasn't yet, and that's not saying Delaware won't, because I'm sure they'll find the back of the net a couple times tonight the way they're playing, but that first goal is a huge one for Watertown. They have the lead. It's a tight checking game. It's a close game. Only a couple scoring chances each way, so Every goal tonight, it's not going to be one of those Columbus Port Huron games, 11 to 9 and 8 to 5, whatever those two were. It's not going to be one of those tonight. So that one goal is huge right now for this Watertown Wolves hockey team. Well, we talked about the fact that we could count on good goaltending tonight. Jeremy Pominville has obviously brought his A game. He stopped all nine shots that he faced. 12 saves for Aaron Taylor as the Wolves outshoot Delaware 13 to 9 in that first period. Official scoring, Michael Desjardins with his seventh goal of the year. Assist from Derek Boudreaux and Kyle Powell adds to his league leading uh, assist total. He's now got 37, that gives him 48 points for the year. Boudreaux, second leading scorer now in the Wolves, his 28th assist of the season. 
He's now got 46 points, still two behind his teammate, Kyle Powell. As we look around the rest of the FHL tonight, Port Huron is in Elmira, and right now they hold the lead. It's two to nothing after the first period there. We'll get you your goal scorers in that game for the Prowlers. Zachary Zolkanich and Justin Portillo each score even strength goals nine minutes apart, which gives Port Huron the lead there. And of course, a lot of people keeping their eye on the Elmira Enforcers after acquiring Tyler Urich this week, the league's leading scorer, to be able to add him to that team with Ahmed Mapuz and their firepower. They think that's gonna put them in a position where they'll be able to challenge the Danbury hat tricks for the top spot in the East. Other scores right now, Mentor and Carolina, uh, they just are underway. These are 735 face-offs that are just underway with no score. The Icebreakers at the Thunderbirds and the Danville Dashers are in Columbus. Eight o'clock face-off tonight. The Battle Creek Rumblebees are in Danbury to take on those first place hat tricks. So again, our score after 20 minutes of play, the Watertown Wolves lead one to nothing after a power play tally by Michael Desjardins. The Thunder put nine shots on Jeremy Pommenville. He stopped all nine of them, and that's how we stand, one to nothing at the end of one period of play. Mikey Basile and I will be back in just a little bit to bring you second period action. And I'm Gary Schofield, and of course, as we always do during intermission, this would not be possible without our great sponsors of Delaware Thunder Hockey. We thank them now. Delaware Thunder Hockey is brought to you in part by House Media, M&T Bank, Easy Loans Incorporated, The Barn, Harrington Insurance, Big Oyster Brewery, 47 ABC, Delaware Prep Ice Hockey, Bridal Bit Liquors, Charlie's Painting, American Hockey Services, Forever Media, Applebee's Grill and Bar, Robert Webster Cosmetic and Family Dentistry, Delmarva Chiropractic and Wellness Center, First Aid Fabrication, Pizza King, Post Acute Medical, Premier Orthopedic Bone and Joint Care, Holiday Inn Express, The Delaware State Lottery, Planet Fitness, Mission Barbecue, THG Transport Incorporated, The YMCA of Dover, CrossFit Dover, Texas Roadhouse, Urco Ceilings and Interiors, Chick-fil-A, MD Mechanical, Fine Line Website and IT Consulting, Super 8, Alpha Care Medical, and Bay Health. We'll be back with the next period's action coming up. You're watching Delaware Thunder Hockey on YouTube. For Mike Basile, I'm Gary Schofield. We'll be back to the action momentarily.
And welcome back into Thunderdome as we get you set for second period action tonight in the Federal Hockey League. The Watertown Wolves, after 20 minutes of play, lead the Delaware Thunder by a score of one to nothing, a power play tally by Michael Desjardins and nine saves by Jeremy Pominville. And I'd have to say at least five of them sparkling saves to keep Delaware off the board in the first That's period. That's why it seems like he has more than just nine. Right. Because some of those were A+. plus. He had Anton Kalin and shot came from the end wall, bounced right back in front. He robbed Anton Kalin and headed left to right. Then you had the one on Ryan Marker on the breakaway, and you also had Brandon Contrado who rung one off the post. That doesn't count as a shot on goal, but it's another uh, you know, good scoring opportunity for Delaware, which they had a ton of in period number one. Now we'll switch sides. Second period's always the most interesting to me, especially at the end of it. You got the long change for the defense. You'll see if some guys get stuck out there for longer than they'd like to, and then you're in quite a predicament when you got to make the, an extra couple strides. It doesn't seem like much, but it's tough out there at the end of a long shift. Tell me how you feel about the new guys. We saw Anthony Pisano tonight. You've seen uh, Dunford on the blue line. For Delaware, Brian Dunford, number 59, and then you had nothing but good things to say about Mark Anthony Simonetta. I really love Simonetta's game. I, I saw him in practice all week, and I looked to Coach Lou, and I said, I like this guy. And Coach Lou agreed right away. And, you know, watching him play, he's got a lot. Of, like you said, I do think he's got a lot of Brendan Young tendencies. Obviously, he's a little bigger than Young, and he, he's more likely to get to the front of the net and make right. things happen there. I think Young could do a lot more, you know, out a little bit top of the circle area. I also think Pisano's a big addition to this team. Just from his size, he didn't have to throw the body or throw the hands that much in the first period, but he's always in the right spot defensively, and he's got a couple shots towards the net. I don't think any hit the net, but he's putting pucks towards the cage. I expect a big period from him as well. Here's the marker line to start the second. Boudreaux, Michael Desjardins, and Lucas are out for Watertown. Marker wins the draw. Kieran Devine will play it behind Aaron Taylor. He'll circle back to Anthony Pisano. Pisano, he'll just loft one back into the neutral zone. Bounces under the glove of Coachman. Gatrano winds and fires. That goes high over the shoulder of Pominville, but missed the net entirely. And Kieran Devine has it back at center, so first chance of the second period goes to the Thunder. Pisano will play it in his own zone now in front of Aaron Taylor. Kind of whiffed on the pass, looking for Contrato, but it comes harmlessly to Municello. Thomas will play it across to Kieran Devine. Now he's almost fans on his pass out of the zone, but is able to get it through center. It went off the stick of Coachman, so no icing here. Pominville will wheel it around, but finds Contrato down low for Municello, and he fumbles the puck, and it comes to Michael Desjardins. Now here comes the Watertown Wolves with speed. Desjardins across the blue line, holds up, throws it down low to Lucas. His shot's deflected by Dick Cristofaro. It is off the near wall where Ryan Marker gets to it. His backhand clearing attempt, though, is intercepted by Lucas. Lucas plays it off the wall, though, and finds Brandon Contrato. Contrato gets stripped by Vladimir Port, and now Boudreaux has it. Goes off the heel of his stick, and everybody's having trouble kind of getting control of the puck here early on in the second period. Yeah, bouncing puck early in the period. That's usually something you see more towards the end of a period when it gets chippy out there. Right now, it's still a fresh sheet of ice. De Cristofaro backhands one to center, but Port's there. He gets it ahead to Devney. Devney across the blue line, walks right into the circle. Nifty move through his skates and then threw it through the slot, but too far for Bogzo, and here comes Ryan Marker for Delaware. Across the blue line, he'll stop, plays it ahead for Simonetta. Simonetta missed on the puck, but Bogzo stopped, and Mark Anthony gets back to it. He's got it behind the net. Contrato now in the corner. Throws it in front, but it's off the paddle of Pominville and behind, and Michael Powell plays it along. Ryan Marker gets to it, though. He'll turn and just throw it back deeper into the zone. Michael Powell gets to it, though, for Watertown, and the Wolves look to exit the zone, and they do. Powell through center, carries it across the blue line. Lucky not to get a high stick there on Simonetta. The shot from Powell is held by Aaron Taylor. That's the second time today back at the other end. Pominville's got the stick down to make a play himself defensively and cut off a pass going to the front of the net. Simonetta's going to be out for a long time as Kalinin and Temin are just popping onto the ice now to make up the rest of his line. 17.57 to go in the second. Watertown leading 1-0. Bormanis on the draw with Demon. Bormanis wins it. Little walks right into the slot. Now right in front. Bormanis with a shot. Taylor doesn't know where it is, but he's got it between the legs, and he'll hold for another faceoff. That's a huge save by Aaron Taylor on Bormanis, and Bormanis couldn't lift it, couldn't do much with it right and tight, but he found a way to get the puck on net, and when you're there, there's a good chance you're going to score. Again off the draw this time. Demon takes it away from Bormanis. He'll skate through the neutral zone, but then he wipes out at the red line. Little help from Liam Little on that play. Now Dunford can't get the puck loose from Bormanis, and they'll battle for it along the near wall in front of the Watertown bench. It's in skates, Kalinin. Nifty little backhand pass to Demon. 
Dual skate through the neutral zone. Good poke check there by Sanstebo, but it comes to Simonetta. Demon with a backhand shot. That goes off the pad of Pominville and behind. Now Bormanis will carry the other way for Watertown. Off the front of his stick, but he gets it back. Now he's poke checked from Kalinin. And now the puck comes back to Anton. He's one on three here, but he'll skate into the zone. And he walks right into the slot. Score! He scores! Anton Kalinin went one on three, took a shot, got a rebound, and then banged it home. What a play by Anton Kalinin. He does it all himself. You said it. He's in one on three. He takes the first shot, squeaks by Pominville, and he just pokes it in one-handed to the empty cage. And it is one to one here. Anton Kalinin stays red hot. He's been so good. I have to be honest. I think I might have just broken myself. <laughs> there you go, huh? <laughs> Pardon me. I apologize. <coughs> Gary's seen better days here. The Anton Kalinin goal got him so fired full, up. <laughs> well, full confession, I've been dealing with this cold for like a month. The cough comes and goes, comes and goes. Woo! Put myself into a fit there, Mikey. <laughs> Off the ensuing draw, the Thunder dump it in deep. The Wolves are able to clear the zone, though. And Taylor cutting backhand pass to Masters. Masters dumps it back in. Pominville holds it up there for Watertown. Off the shoulder of Marvin Powell. And now Natras looks to play it along. They're having a little hard time getting loose. Clearing pass there by Natras, deflected by McIntosh, but now ahead for Boudreaux. He'll go to the corner with Kieran Devine. Kieran walls him off nicely and is able to get ahead to Taylor Cutting. Cutting now through the neutral zone. Couldn't get it into the Watertown zone thanks to Natras. And that dump attempt also blocked by Natras and back to center. Clearing attempt for McIntosh goes off the stick. It's Boudreaux right in the slot. Score! Derek Boudreaux, top shelf, after the clearing attempt from McIntosh, hit a body. I'm not sure who deflected that that had it come loose to Boudreaux. It might have been Calpuzos who deflected that, but Derek Boudreaux didn't miss. McIntosh with the turnover there, obviously his displeasure as he slashes the stick over the crossbar there. And now it's two to one Wolves. The last thing you want to do after giving, after getting a goal is give up one. Especially on the ensuing shift, Boudreaux, that's his 19th of the season and puts Watertown right back on top, two to one. Off the draw, Boxel, nice pass across to Devney. Devney walks across the blue line. Tried to get one in front, Aaron Taylor will snatch that one out of midair, and he'll hold on for a faceoff with 16.04 to go. Two goals in under four minutes to start period number two, the opposite of period number one, we can say, and that turnover was uncharacteristic of the Delaware Thunder in period number one, now period number two. Couple off. odd man chances both ways. Off the faceoff to Cristofaro, was able to get it to the Watertown blue line. Now that puck was played initially by a high stick by Powell, batted out of the air by Contrado, and now Calpuzos comes the other way. Backhand pass, Bogsel fumbles the puck, and now it's on the side of the net and underneath the pad of Aaron Taylor, and we'll get a whistle. Aaron Taylor snopped that one, pinned it against the post, mighty close to going in as he was off the post, obviously, with no one in front of the net trying to cover there as well as the puck was bouncing, bouncing, and ends up in behind him. Let me just say, too, I know a lot of people made the insinuation this week after the trade of Tyler Urich that Watertown was like packing it in. There's a ton of talent still left on this roster. I know it looks alarming when you trade the league's leading point scorer, but these Watertown Wolves, they came to play. They've got plenty of firepower and they're out in front of this game, two well, to one. There's a ton of talent on this team, like you said, Gary, and this team's not gonna pack it in. I don't care who's on the roster. No team is gonna pack it in in a playoff race, in a playoff spot. It's just not how it works as Dunford finishes Bormanis. Bormanis not happy. Uh-oh, now we might get a little extra here. And you're right, Bormanis did not like getting taken to the wall after that puck deflected into the netting. But uh, for me, Brian Dunford's just finishing the play. There's nothing wrong there. Yeah, Dunford's not a dirty player at all. Dunford's been around for a while. He knows to play on the edge a little bit and get away with it, but he doesn't know where the puck is. It bounced straight up off his stick and out of play. Right. We'll see if anything lingers from that between these two and the rest of the teams. Bormanis and Demon on the draw. Now we get a quick whistle. A little false start here on the faceoff. Uh, give credit, too, to the Watertown Wolves. They've done very well in the faceoff dot tonight and setting up scoring chances right off of draws. See if they can do it again. Sanstebo at the blue line. He'll fire one. Deflects off of Kalinin. And Dunford will play it around. Simonetta will pick it up. Tried to go cross ice, but instead Little 
deflects that pass, and Watertown's able to dump it back in deep. Brian Dunford will chase there. Off the back wall, plays it to Bryce Litke. Litke with a nice outlet pass, but Kalinin couldn't control it. Would have been on a break, and Jeremy Pominville is able to play it off the wall, but not out. Little battles with Simonetta. Demon winds, fires, and Jeremy Pominville makes the save with the catching mid against his chest, and we'll get another stoppage of play. And again, Jeremy Pominville has been really good tonight. That's great tracking by the goaltender, too. He got the glove over to that far side to pin it up against his chest and make sure the puck didn't drop free and have a scoring chance for Kalinin and Simonetta in front. Well, and, you know, Simonetta nearly got Kalinin on a break there with that outlet pass. Just missed, but that's another check mark for number 44. Off the draw, the puck's in the corner. Natris gets to it first, but it's too far for Lucas. Pisano at the blue line fires one. High and wide, Pucks gets deflected into the slot, kept in by Kieran Devine, but Derek Boudreaux picks it up there for Watertown. He'll throw it across. Calpuzos, another pass ahead. Desjardins just a little too far, but he gets to it, throws it in front. Kieran Devine's stick goes into the pads of Aaron Taylor, and the puck goes to the corner. Ryan Marker will carry out for Delaware. Well, that goal was nearly on Kieran Devine's stick as the puck bounced after it hit him, and Taylor had to make two saves, one on his own defenseman. Pominville plays it along. In the skates of Lucas, taken away by Ryan Marker. He spins around Lucas. Now he'll play it back to the point to Pisano. Pisano fires one, that deflects high and out of play off the stick of Lucas. And it's a souvenir for that little girl in the uh, VIP area of Thunderdome. She made sure she was getting it. She hopped there to make sure she got that loose puck. But again, Pisano just putting pucks on net. You like that from the big defenseman as well. Obviously a lot of size and you gotta think there's a ton of power behind that shot. Absolutely, and as you always say, putting pucks on net, never a bad idea. Can't be. McIntosh on the draw with Powell. Kyle wins it, but then Michael Powell loses it along the wall. Comes loose in the circle. Kyle Powell gets back to it, and he'll play it to Sanstabo. Sanstabo will carry it out of the Watertown zone. His pass ahead's on the stick of Boxel. Boxel walks into the high slot. He's marked there by Eric Masters, and he'll just play it around behind to Devney. Now we're getting a little extracurriculars between Taylor Cutting and Marvin Powell, but the play continues with Boxel holding the puck in the corner. Now we're getting a delayed penalty call on the Thunder. I have a feeling this one's against Taylor Cutting. Right in front, Devney with a backhand shot goes wide. Had Sanstabo on the doorstep, but didn't see him. Charlie Penns finally touches up for the Thunder, and here comes the penalty call. Let's see what it is. It's a rough on Cutting. Not sure how that couldn't have went on Watertown as well. A long uh, time between the penalties there. Now there's certainly a little extra going on between Cutting and Marvin Powell behind the play. Cutting's gonna get called for the penalty. He's, lead, he's the team leader in penalty minutes. Now Anthony Pisano has words for Marvin Powell. I don't think that would end well for Powell. Then again, I don't think that would end well for anybody. No, again, 6'5", <laughs> 285. Now convert, and you can see him now skating right behind Anton Kalinin, who conversely is about five foot eight. The height difference is massive. But Watertown will go back to the power play. They're one for one tonight. Michael Desjardins cashed in with his seventh of the season. Off the draw. Watertown controls. Behind the net is Derek Boudreaux, but he wipes out after a check from Charlie Penns. But the puck comes to Michael Desjardins. Back to the point, Calpuzos plays it across to Kyle Powell. Kyle Powell down low. That jumps over the stick of Devney. But Desjardins gets to it behind the net. And Watertown will regroup. Devney skates back to the point. Down low to Desjardins. Back to Devney. Everything on the outside so far. Kyle Powell winds and fires a shot off the paddle of Taylor. But Devney gets to the puck along the near wall. Tried to get it deep. Charlie Penns checks Boudreaux, but the puck's still in the Delaware zone. Calpuzos with a pass for Devney went off the heel of his stick and into the corner. That would have been a great chance. Desjardins. Calpuzos in the circle, but just got a little too deep. Nice deflection there from Desjardins. And Aaron Taylor makes the save. 13-18 to go. Still 2-1 Watertown in a minute 42 to go on the power play. And we apologize, no stream down right now. Still got the audio up. Uh, camcorder just came disconnected. Should get that up in just a second for you guys here as a 2-1 game, 142 left to the power play. 13-18 to the period. Got a stop after Aaron Taylor held on to that deflection from Michael Desjardins. He was going for his second goal of the night. Now there's a discussion going on here. I think that Calpuzo now to Boxel. Back to the circle to Kyle Powell. Traffic in front, a shot from Powell, knocked down by Taylor. 
He'll cover up for a faceoff. 102 left on the man advantage. And we're back up and running. We apologize for a bit of technical difficulties. Missed a couple shots. Aaron Taylor made the one glove save, and that one deflected up and out of play with 102 to go. 12.38 to go to period number two. Watertown leads 2-1. to one. They're one for one on the power play so far tonight. Boudreau, Devney, Desjardins, Powell, and Sanstebo are out. Off the draw, it's Kyle Powell, the league leader in assists. Plays it off to Sanstebo, who walks into the circle, back to Powell at the point. Powell holding. He's playing a little game of catch here on the blue line right now. Now Devney, top of the circle. Plays it down low to Boudreau. Back to Devney for the one-timer. That's poked away by Municello as the Thunder finally able to get it clear. It feels like Watertown's had two power plays. They've been in the Delaware zone the entire time on each man advantage. Well, it's little plays like that that don't show up on the stat sheet, but that's huge by Thomas Minicello. That's a great player and a great scoring opportunity, and Minicello takes it away. Powell again at the top. Holding. Throws one in front. It's deflected by Desjardins, but it goes wide into the corner. Derek Boudreaux picks it up. Walks into the circle. Little give and go play with Desjardins, but a deflection by Kieran Devine. Gets that puck loose, but it's tracked down by Boudreaux. Now he walks into the slot. Backhand pass to Devney. Devney trying to get it back to the point to Powell. And again, it's Municello who gets a stick on it. McIntosh able to clear it back to center. That'll do it for the power play. 11.36 to go. Watertown up 2-1. to one, And Devney carries back in for the Wolves. He's marked there in the corner by DeCristofaro, but is able to get it to Desjardins. Puck comes loose in the circle. And Devney's able to play it in deeper. Kieran Devine will play it there for the Thunder. Plays that off the referee. And DeCristofaro has to pick it back up. He's pressured, gets it to Kieran Devine. Devine plays it further, but it's held in at the point. Fired in from the blue line, and now Desjardins back into the circle. Bogsell with a shot goes high over the glove of Taylor, but comes to Coachman at the point, and he'll just play it back in behind. Bogsell backhands it. Desjardins all alone in front, holds. Backhand shot, save. Taylor throws it through the goal mouth, and now Contrado finally able to get it back to center, and it'll bounce into the Watertown zone. It won't have enough steam for icing, and the Thunder are able to get a change. Well, that's a huge save by Aaron Taylor. They should not have that much time in front, especially Michael Desjardins, and he got the glove on it to knock it down. Delaware struggling in the second. Pisano clears it, but way too far. This not going to be icing as Kalinin wins the race to the hash mark. Contrato in front, Marker, he scores! Ryan Marker from Brandon Contrato scores his league-leading 29 on a beautiful cross-ice feed from number 90. That's a great play by Kalinin to beat out the icing. Contrado gets to the puck on the wall and finds Ryan Marker all alone far side of the ice and you know he's not going to make a mistake there. 2-2. Two -two. And Justin Coachman's asking the linesman, you know, why did you wave off the icing? I think Watertown felt they were in position. I don't know that he ever saw the streaking Kalinin coming down the left wing there. But well, they're still talking about it now and just thinking about that, actually what I think the linesman did was point to Coachman saying he had a chance to make a play on the okay. puck. I'm not sure. Kalinin looked like he won the race regardless. It's close. It's only to the hash marks of the race, so right. the defenseman has a big advantage. I don't think they're going to be able to take the goal off here. We'll see. I think that's the explanation. I think you're right on the money. If my lip reading is any good, which every once in a while, I'm usually good at picking up the good words, not the ones that are important <laughs> when it comes to lip reading. But Kyle Powell pleading his case. But either way, it's going to be a 2-2 game with 10.34 to go as the conversation expires here. Doesn't Ryan Marker is 29th of the year. Doesn't end well for Watertown for them. I'm sure they're not happy about that. I know after the period two, unhappy with the couple cross checks on the back. So the bench uh, in gray has not been happy thus far tonight. Well, especially too, I mean, if, you, if you're Watertown, you feel like, you know, we're dominating the play. We're getting most of the chances. Here comes another one, Powell with a shot that goes wide. Boggsell back to Powell and it slides under his stick, but a good keep by Sanstebo. He'll battle along the near wall with Dunford. Dunford's able to play it on deeper to Pisano. Pisano's pass to Simonette, a nifty move to get that around Boxel. Now to Kalinin, Demon with a backhand pass. Kalinin trying to get it through Vladimir Port, but Port standing up nicely at the blue line, gets it back to center, and that's where Anthony Pisano will just circle back. Got to watch from behind, Boudreaux came off the bench and was able to pick his pocket. Now he'll wind his way around behind the net. Now he'll circle back. Marked there by Dunford, good play by the Delaware defenseman, but then he loses his stick. Puck thrown in front, Pisano's able to clear for Delaware. Simonetta tried to find a streaking Kalinin. Puck goes off the stick of Natris through the legs of Kalinin, and that gives Port a chance to get it out, gets it ahead to Boudreaux. Boudreaux to Lucas, now it's two on two with Desjardins. Desjardins in a circle, walks around the defenseman, but Aaron Taylor is able to cover it up as Desjardins got around Litke, 
but a nice play by Taylor to get the stop. It's a good play by Aaron Taylor to cover up and get a whistle. Pisano lays the big check along the boards there, and that's how you, <laughs> that's what you expect from Pisano. Couple players banged up. I believe it's Lucas who maybe took the boards up high as he went in a bit awkwardly. There's been a bit of sloppiness here in the last few minutes, you know? A lot of long passes that are being incompleted, fumbled pucks, chances that are being created off of, you know, turnovers, which I don't think that's the style that, or the type of game either of these teams want to get into. That's 100% correct. Just watching the bench here as both teams are a little fired up here after that. And, you know, Pisano yelling back and forth. You got Powell yelling back and forth a bit. So both these teams uh, definitely fired up. They know this is a huge game. It's a three-game weekend, and this game sets the tone for all three. Well, that's the key, too. You know, if you're, especially, like, if you look at it this way, if you're the Thunder, right, you're currently sitting in last place. You're at the halfway mark of your season. If you're going to make a playoff push, if you're going to make a legitimate run at trying to catch mentor it in fourth place right now it starts this weekend and you've got to at least get six points this weekend right and you're in a position now in a tie game where maybe you can steal one from watertown who's had your number all season long and if you're the wolves you feel like you've got something to prove you just traded your best player earlier this week you're still sitting in third place you're chasing the team you traded him to you want to make a statement as well this weekend against the last place team in your division. Overall, a huge weekend. Anytime you play a team three times, obviously it's going to be a divisional game for the most part, and you love to see the action. And it's going to be chippy by Sunday. Probably by tomorrow night it'll get a little chippy. Shot deflected off the stick of Michael Powell. Goes to the corner. The Thunder able to get it out as McIntosh plays it back to center. But now Powell gets it back in the Watertown zone. He'll play it to Calpuzos. Plays it off the glass. Masters knocks it down there at center, and he lifts it into the Watertown zone, but it goes into the netting. That faceoff's gonna come back to neutral ice. Puck will come back down to neutral ice is correct. 9-10 to go in the period. We'll do it for the fourth time now from center ice in period number two. As it's the Desjardins line and the Evan McIntosh line. With Masters and cutting, pens to Cristofaro on the defense. You got Natris and Marvin Powell on defense for Watertown. Boudreau and McIntosh on the draw. Evan wins this one. Watertown's been really good on the faceoffs tonight in Delaware. Able to get one to Cristofaro, gets it through the neutral zone and into the Wolves zone, but backpedaling to get it is Natris. Now he plays it ahead right on the tape to Lucas. Lucas across the blue line, holds, fires a shot, and that's blocked by the captain. He's so good closing those legs and blocking shots. I don't think we praise him enough for the work that he does in the defensive zone. Big hit from Eric Masters on Powell, but the puck comes free all the way back through center and into the Delaware zone. Masters shot through center ice like a missile there, had Powell lined up the whole way, and this third line cutting Masters and McIntosh, they might not score the most goals, but they're gonna be steady in the defensive zone and they're gonna work their tails off. Boxel forces a giveaway, couldn't get it to Boudreau though, but he's still holding the puck. Throws it back behind the net, Devney gets caught up with Litke, and now the net comes off, and we'll get a stoppage of play. They're gonna say Aaron Taylor knocked the net off, so I'm curious to see if Delaware is gonna be able to get a change. Yes, they will. They'll say incidental contact as the face will face off will stay deep in Delaware ice with 8.19 to go in period number two, a much slower period than period number one. Yeah, a lot more whistles, a lot more starting and stopping. Of course, you had the power play uh, opportunity for Watertown. Off the draw, another face off win for Delaware and another puck out of play off the stick of Kyle Powell as Litke was trying to wind it around. Powell deflects it out of the zone, so we'll get a face off to the left of Aaron Taylor again. I want to remind you tomorrow night, first responders night, head to Live Source. After the game tonight, I believe the first responder jerseys will be up. You can bid on your favorite player's jersey. Ooh, puck in front of the net. Good defensive play there by Licky to clear it out. Now Marker brings it ahead to Municello. Tried to get it through the skates of Calpuzos, but couldn't do it. And now Watertown looks to retreat the other way. Devney walks into the zone. Threw Contrato into the circle, plays it down low. Bogsel throws it in front. Was looking for the streaking Kyle Powell, but it was under his stick. But Devney gets it back. Boxel behind the net, through the skates of Dunford, and threw it right into the slot, but nobody was there. And now here come Contrato and Municello, two on one. Brandon Contrato fires, and is saved by Jeremy Pominville. And Watertown played that perfectly. Calpuzos played the passing lane. Pominville took on the shooter, no rebound. I would have loved to see Municello, uh, Contrato, my apologies, go cross ice there to Municello. Pominville was out so far. You send that cross ice, there's going to be a lot of net for Municello. And Pominville has that advantage with his quickness. 
uh, from uh, laterally, from side to side, that he can come out that far and still make a save on the pass, but much, much tougher, obviously. Watertown wins the faceoff, but the puck comes loose in the corner. Simonetta battling with Liam Little there. Liam goes down to the ice. He's got his stick hooked, and the puck comes loose to center. Kieran Devine able to play it back into the Watertown zone, and Simonetta will chase again. Sans Debo over skates. Kalinin, Demon couldn't get it on his forehand. And now Pisano will fire from the blue line. It goes off the pad of Pommetville. And all the way back to center, Sidenko tried to play it around Devine. Kieran did well to get it back into the Watertown zone. Vladimir Port plays it off the wall. Here comes Bormanis. Former Thunder, at least for a weekend. Plays it deep into the corner. That's past Pisano, comes to Liam Little. Throws it into the slot, Bormanis got it on the backhand instead of the forehand. But now he gets a chance and winds and fires and Taylor's up to the task. And that, that shot goes off his pad all the way back into the Watertown zone. Now it's loose, Kalinin it, into Simonetta in the slot and it's just out of his reach and then Port with a little poke check gets Watertown going back the other way. Bormanis ahead to Kyle Powell. He holds up, throws it through the slot, good back check by Evgeny Demon brings Delaware the other way. Back to center, Kalinin picks it up. Was behind him though, and he couldn't quite get possession, and now we get a whistle. Looks like we're gonna get an interference call. I think it's Kyle Powell who'll go to the box. That's gonna put Delaware back on the power play 0 for 1 thus far tonight. Chance to take the lead here with 6.19 to go. Well, this is a huge opportunity for the Thunder. Obviously, like you said, it's been a little more Watertown this period, but Simonetta again gets to the front. The pass from Kalina just a bit off the mark, but it seems like once the camaraderie comes between these two, three, I should say, including Demon, it's going to be a very dangerous line. Calpuzos comes on. Natchez will go off for Watertown. They'll have Boudreaux, Powell, and Lucas out on the penalty kill. After winning the faceoff, Charlie can't keep it in at the blue line, but is able to pull that puck away from Lucas, but then he gets stripped. Here comes Lucas, walks into the slot. His shot goes over the glove of Taylor and wide, but he gets it back behind the net. Now he walks back in front, another shot and a save by Taylor. Puck's loose and now Anton Kalinin will carry it ahead for Delaware. Backhand pass ahead to Marker. Marker stops. Holding in the neutral zone. Backhand pass to Pens. Pens to Pisano. Anthony looked like he was offside there, but they say no. Puck loose though, and now Marvin Powell just play it back to center. Almost well, a little cherry pick play there by Lucas, hoping that that puck would get through Pens, but it didn't. 1.15 left on the power play. Marker gets through center, holds at the blue line. He'll just play it in behind, looking for Municello. Thomas tracks it down. Puck comes loose. Christofaro holds it in at the blue line. Throws one through the slot. It's just bouncing, and Marvin Powell finally gets a stick on it. Throws it off the glass, but it goes into the netting, and we'll get a face off to the left of Pommetville. Good power play thus far for the Thunder. A couple good chances, but you got to take away those turnovers at the blue line as the puck came all the way out. Lucas probably with the best scoring opportunity of the period of the uh, power play with a shorthanded goal. McIntosh out with Masters, Municello to Cristofaro and Contrato. Mac wins the draw. Municello gets it back to the Cristofaro, but on his backhand, he can only get it far enough as McIntosh. Municello from the circle with a shot. And again, Pommetville with the save, and he's done such a really nice job tonight of controlling that first shot and not leaving rebound opportunities. And both goalies have been really good. Two to two midway through the second. Uh, probably where most FPHL games are throughout this point, but I saw a couple good saves on both ends of the ice. Here's Dan. Clean win to Cristofaro. Holds, throws one in front. It's deflected by Masters, but it just ran out of steam, and Pommetville makes the save. Coachman behind the net will wheel it around, and it will clear it all the way back to Aaron Taylor in the Delaware zone. We're down to 35 seconds left on the power play. Yeah, Dan DeCristofaro took a tough route to that puck there as he could have stopped it probably at the red line, but he wanted to keep it at the blue line, and instead it goes all the way down. Municello, touch pass to McIntosh, tries to get the Contrato backhand shot, and Pommenville again in perfect position, makes the save, holds the rebound, and will get another face off, this time to his right. How good has Contrato been tonight? With the vision, great passes to Marker as always, Contrato and Marker just seem to play better when they're together. It doesn't matter if it's the first, second, third line, power play, penalty kill. Those two are always better when they're on the ice together. It's like peanut butter and jelly. They Both just are go. great on their own. Well, when you put them together between two slices of white bread, you're in heaven. 4.36 to go in the period. We're down to 15 seconds on the power play as Watertown clears the zone. 
Maybe time for one last rush with the man advantage as Charlie Pens carries ahead. He gets it to Marker. He'll come through center with speed. Walks in, winds, fakes. He's gonna go around behind the net, looking for the wraparound. He's gonna carry it all the way back to the blue line. Power play over. Plays it down low to Demon. Evgeny Demon to Pens at the top. He'll fire one, and that hits Pisano right in front. Puck's still loose in the slot. Finally, Watertown's able to clear it back, but now Pens will bang it in from the red line as Pisano goes for a change. Sanstebo plays it ahead, Lucas. Nice touch pass by Boudreaux for Kyle Powell, who carried into the Delaware zone. He stops at the blue line and just plays it into the corner. The dump and chase game has been good for Watertown tonight, not that time, as a bit too far gets to Penns, who clears it back to center. 3.40 to go, Demon steals it in the neutral zone and carries it into the Watertown zone. Tried to get it through Natris, but he defended it well. Pucks loose in the corner. Shot from the point from Dunford is saved by Pominville. And Watertown clears it out. Now here comes Boudreaux on a break. He's onside in the slot. Throws it back. Good defensive play by Dunford to block that pass. And for Boudreaux to be on a break and not even get a shot off, that's well done by the Thunder. But he's still got the puck. 3.15 to go. Natris at the point. He loses the puck. And now here comes Delaware the other way. Ryan Marker with Kalina behind him. Drops to Kalina. Anton holds too long. And the puck is on the side of the net, I believe. Now we get a whistle. Wow, almost two instances, one on each end, where trying to do a little too much, maybe, and not being able to get a shot on goal. 100% too much, especially from Boudreaux on the one side. He's in on a breakaway, and it looks like he wanted to drop pass to somebody. Nobody home made Dunford's life completely easy. And then on this end, you have Kalinin, who made a nice play, was looking for the pass across. Unfortunately, that was shut off for him, and he tried to jam at home. I like the effort there, but nothing doing, and you wonder why that whistle took so long to blow. I never saw the puck after it was under Boudreaux. Three minutes left in the period. We're tied at two. McIntosh pressuring Bogsel, but he's able to get it to center. Michael Desjardins will dump it in deep. Aaron Taylor holds it up there, but gives it right back to Desjardins. Tried to find Bogsel in the circle. He walks in front, puck's rolling, and now Eric Masters is able to fish it out, and he comes the other way. Masters to McIntosh, a little too far for him, but he'll get to it. Tried to backhand it in front, went off of a Watertown skate, back to the blue line. A shot from Penns is deflected into the corner by Taylor Cutting. Puck still loose along the near wall, but it does come back to center. Chris DeFaro will just wind and fire one into the Watertown zone. McIntosh gets to it and plays it in deeper. Port and Cutting will come together. McIntosh gets to the puck. He's banged by Devney, poked by Desjardins, but it comes back to McIntosh, but bounces under his uh, stick. And now Devney is able to clear it back. Desjardins ahead for Bogsel to Desjardins. Can't get the puck out of his skates, throws it in front, little spin around shot by Vladimir Port is knocked down by Taylor. He'll cover up for a faceoff with two minutes to go. Look at that, two, 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 two. Two minutes, two to two in the second period. You never see that, Gary. That's probably some good luck for your birthday here tonight. It could happy be. Happy birthday to you over the broadcast. We did it here over the PA. Got to do it over the broadcast as well. Gary, happy birthday well, thank to you. you what are you, 27? Uh, not a day over. <laughs> you got that right, my friend. Off the draw, Ryan Marker. <laughs> Wins it, Pisano, not much steam on that pass though, nearly gave it away, Kieran Devine will play it further. Gattrato's pass ahead off the stick of Marker, but on the tape of Municello, and then offside is the drop pass, actually I think it was a poke check from uh, Calpuzos that sent that back out of the zone. Yeah, good defensive play. When you step up at the blue line, it puts a lot of pressure on these forwards here, and you, you kind of see it, whether it's Watertown or Delaware. When a defenseman steps up at the blue line, you kind of get that extra second where you clench and hold off, and that's enough to draw a play offside. Face-off win for Marker. Devine will throw one in from the red line, and that's an easy stop for Pominville. And he'll hold for another face-off. So I'd say on that play, that's a win for the Thunder to get the face-off just to the left of Pominville. Of course, anytime you get an offensive zone face-off, it's usually a good thing, especially when Devine's just dumping it in deep there, trying to get a four check on, but instead you get a face-off in the offensive zone. Unfortunately, they lose it. In the corner, Coachman behind with Municello. They'll battle for it. Thomas comes away with the puck. Still loose behind the net. Now in the corner, it's Contrado. Tried to play it ahead to Marker, but kind of fanned on the pass. And now Marker's walled off by Coachman nicely. Puck comes loose, and Calpuzos will play it ahead. Lofts it back to center. Kieran Devine knocks it down. It's off the skate of Boudreau. Contrado's backhand pass is on the tape of Marker, but he fumbles a bit. 1.15 left in the second period. We're tied at two. Marker ahead to Contrado. Brandon walks in, fires a shot. It goes off the skate of Coachman. And now it's loose in the corner. Marker backhands it ahead. Municello throws it in front, but nobody's there 
except for Calpuzo, so he plays it to the far wall. But Marker comes away with the puck behind the net. Minute to go, Contrado to Marker. Marker back to the point, Pisano winds and fires, and that one goes wide. Kieran Devine can't keep it in at the blue line. He's harassed by Lucas, finally gets it and just plays it back in deep. Marker gets out of the zone to put this play back on side, 40 seconds left. Lucas now for Watertown. He'll just backhand it back to center. Looking for Devney. Joe gets ahead of the defense. Nice play by Bryce Litke. But then he bangs into the crossbar and knocks the net off its moorings. 30.1 seconds to go, and we'll get a faceoff in front of Aaron Taylor. It didn't look pretty, but it was a great play by Bryce Litke. Both defensemen were beat a bit, and Litke dives back, makes the play, and pokes it away for the Delaware Thunder. You mentioned the, you know, the longer shifts in the second period because you're further away from your bench. You think that's what's leading to these odd man rushes on each side here? It definitely doesn't help in there. It was the miss of a change. Licky was coming off. Dunford was ready to pop on. Pisano doesn't come to the bench. And then you're in between. Where are you? And Devaney's behind the defense. And let's not forget, this is Anthony's first action of the season. You know, it's one thing to work out on your own and stay in shape, quote unquote shape. It's different once you get into game action. And he's played quite a lot of minutes in his first game. Yes, he has. 30 seconds to go. Delaware wins the draw. Dunford. Plays it around the boards. Demon backhands it to center. Misses for Kalinin, though. And now Port was trying to get Desjardins, but instead he got Dunford. Dunford's pass is in the skates of Kalinin. 15 seconds to go. Puck in the corner. They'll battle for it. Sans to Beau, Kalinin. Demon's in there as well as Desjardins. Bogsel, too. Down goes Kalinin. No call. Thunder fans wanted a trip. You're not going to get one, but you'll get an icing with 2.9 to go. Now you got a lot of people yelling here. You got Watertown saying no icing out. Aaron Taylor seeing if he wants to come to the bench. 2.9 is too much time in my book for Aaron Taylor to come to the bench. I know it's pretty unlikely, but he's going to break his stick. He's, he's trying to get the attention close. of the, the bench here. Yeah, I think he's unhappy that, any, that no one's even acknowledging his question. They are going to get Taylor to the bench. I don't know if I like this. Well, the key is you got to win the faceoff which they haven't done a good job of tonight thus far. Watertown's been, I mean, I don't have the official numbers in front of me, but Watertown's been pretty dominant in the face-off circle, I think. And don't get me wrong, the chance of the puck winning so perfectly on a face-off and making it down there in 2.9 seconds, slim to none, don't right. get me wrong, but it's a little risky. Off the draw, pens, fires in front, it's loose in front, and they bang away at it. Port in front, Pominville made the initial save, and the horn sounds on the period. Best chance other than the two goals for Delaware in this period came right there. So despite your concern, the move did pay off having that extra body in front, but it just couldn't cash in. So we're 40 minutes in and we're right back where we started, tied at two. The Thunder put two in the net, Anton Kalinin, Ryan Marker with his 29th of the year, and for Watertown, Derek Boudreaux cashes in his 19th of the season, and we sit tied at two apiece. You would say with a 2-2 score that it's been an, an even game, but I, there's a part of me that says as I'm watching this that if you're a Watertown fan, you feel like you should be ahead in this one. Yeah, you look at it that way, you do, but Aaron Taylor once again coming to the aid of the rest of the Delaware Thunder with a couple big saves that period, but I do think the second half of that second period was a little more Thunder oriented. The Thunder started getting back to their hockey. Obviously the odd man rushes are a little scary, not something you want to see so much of, but Delaware definitely got better as the period went on. Yeah, I would imagine that's something that both coaches are going to talk about uh, during the intermission, is just the amount of giveaways in the neutral zone, giveaways near your own blue line, which led to some real good scoring chances on both sides. But as Mike alluded to, really good goaltending play has kept it at a 2-2 game. pominville has been phenomenal. Aaron Taylor's made some really good saves tonight. Let's take a look at some scores from around the FHL before we take a break here for this intermission. Port Huron is in Elmira tonight. They lead 2-1 with 17-10 to go in the second period there. Carolina out early on Mentor, which is a game that Thunder fans should be paying attention to. Again, if you look at the standings, Mentor is in fourth place in the Eastern Division. The Thunder, realistically, their best chance if they're gonna make the postseason 
is to catch the icebreakers. Of course. The best way to do that is to get at least six points this weekend and take advantage of the fact that Mentor's playing Carolina, the best team in the league. Right. And you figure that they, they may come away with no points. Carolina, 2.51 to go in the second period. Thunderbirds are up three to nothing there. Of course, our score here is two to two. They're just underway, I, I should say just underway, they're just finished with the second period between Battle Creek and Danbury. Trying to get you an updated score there. Every once in a while, it takes a little while for some teams to get up there. So. Two nothing hat tricks ahead of Battle Creek. My curiosity really is whether Morgan Hudson is in net tonight. I know he played Rumblebees. very good against Mentor the other night. Unfortunately, they lost four to two. I know he gave th three goals that game, but he was phenomenal. It is Morgan Hudson in goal tonight. Nine shots against, he's given up a pair in that game at Danbury. And then in our other game, Columbus is ahead of Danville. The score there, two to nothing as they're at the second intermission. Just at, I'm sorry, 6.50 to go in the second period. Pair of goals for Columbus come from Wyatt Trumbly and CJ Hayes. So those are your scores from around the FHL. Again, our goal scores here in the second period are uh, Derek Boudreaux for Watertown, Anton Kalinin on an impressive uh, solo effort against three Watertown defenders to find the net. And then Ryan Marker on just a beautiful feed from Brandon Gutrato tied this game up at two with his 29th of the season. We'll step aside for a few minutes and we come back. We'll get you ready for third period action. We're tied at two between Watertown and your Delaware Thunder. He's Mike Basile. I'm Gary Schofield. We got one more frame to go. Should be a good one. Delaware Thunder Hockey is brought to you in part by Betsy Ross Pizza, Brimming Horn Meadery, Duck Creek Printing, Gatehouse Media, M&T Bank, Easy Loans Incorporated, The Barn, Harrington Insurance, Big Oyster Brewery, 47 ABC, Delaware Prep Ice Hockey, Bridal Bit Liquors, Charlie's Painting, American Hockey Services, Forever Media, Applebee's Grill and Bar, Robert Webster Cosmetic and Family Dentistry, Delmarva Chiropractic and Wellness Center, First Aid Fabrication, Pizza King, Post Acute Medical, Premier Orthopedic Bone and Joint Care, Holiday Inn Express, the Delaware State Lottery, Planet Fitness, Mission Barbecue, THG Transport Incorporated, the YMCA of Dover, CrossFit Dover, Texas Roadhouse, Urco Ceilings and Interiors, Chick-fil-A, MD Mechanical, Fine Line Website and IT Consulting, Super 8, Alpha Care Medical, and Bay Health. We'll be back with the next period's action coming up. You're watching Delaware Thunder Hockey on YouTube. For Mike Basile, I'm Gary Schofield. We'll be back to the action momentarily.
And we welcome you back to Thunderdome, Gary Schofield. He's Mike Basile. We're getting set for third period action. We'll give you the official numbers from the second period. Anton Kalinin on an assist from Bryce Litke ties the game at one. Just a little over a minute later, Derek Boudreaux scores on a pass from Jamie Lucas. And that put Watertown back in front two to one. And then on a beautiful play, Anton Kalinin to Ryan Marker with an assist from Brandon Catrato. Delaware ties it at two, and that's where we stand as we head into the third period. Mike, what's the key for each team as they come out in the first five minutes of this third frame? Well, it's simple. You don't usually see this. Win a period, win a game. I mean, it's it's 20 minutes of a two to two hockey game. So it's going to be wild. It's going to be a crazy finish, and it's going to be really intense here for this last 20. So we'll see how it plays out. I think it's going to be a physical 20 minutes. You saw the end of the first, got a little chippy. The second period, I say mellowed out a bit. Pisano threw the body around a bit, but we didn't see anything crazy out there. We haven't seen really much. We had the cutting, roughing penalty, but other than that, it's just been a stick infraction, interference here and there. So you saw a couple little things that have could have been called, but that's really it in this game. Saw a lot of odd man rushes in the last half of the second period. Do you expect things to be as wide open here in the third, or do you see the teams kind of buttoning things up here? I think we'll see the teams button things up a good bit in this third period. Starting things off, it'll be Ryan Marker, Thomas Municello, Brandon Contrato with Kieran Devine, Devine and Pisano. Now paired back up, the captain, Charlie Penn's back with DeCristofaro on defense. For Watertown, it's Lucas Boudreau, Michael Desjarlais, Calpuzos, and Coachman. Delaware fires it into the Watertown zone. Calpuzos gets to it. Boudreau plays it off the wall to Lucas. Lucas ahead for Michael Desjardins. He'll carry it into the Delaware zone with speed. Fumbles the puck. Now he's thrown to the ice by Pisano. No call there. Pisano plays it around. It's off the stick of Kieran Devine. Now Boudreau steps into the circle. Good back check by Kieran, but he can't clear the zone. Calpuzos throws one. It goes off the shin of Municello, but Watertown keeps it in. Puck loose in the circle, and Lucas gets to it. Lucas throws it into the slot. Good back check by Ryan Marker. Here comes Delaware the other way. Marker ahead for Contrato. Across the blue line. Back to Marker. Shoots. And that one went off of Sanstebo and goes wide. Now here comes Boudreaux back the other way for Watertown. Lucas across the blue line. Back to Boudreaux. Spins in the circle. Marked there by DeCristofaro. But Lucas still has the puck. Port from the point. Scores! Vladimir Point. Port on a shot that deflected off the leg of Municello. And then beat Aaron Taylor in the top corner, puts Watertown on top three to two. Well, whether it was tipped or not, it looked mighty close. Couldn't tell from up here. It definitely was a screen set by Municello as Port shot got through the screen and into the back of the net. And for Vladimir Port, that's his first goal of the season. And he now has 10 points. And give credit to Boutreau, who controlled that, I'm sorry, Lucas, who controlled that puck along the wall and just kind of held and held and held. And finally, the pass, passing lane became clear to get it to Port. And Port puts Watertown on top three to two, just a minute two into the third period. Right, and looking at that play, it's simple, but they lost the stick on that play. It was a five on four. Jamie Lucas had lost his stick, so they had a man without a stick, and they still are able to create and get a beautiful scoring chance. Bryce Litke trying to get it out of the zone, deflecting it in deep is Simonetta. That'll bounce in behind Pominville. Port plays it there. It's past Sedenko. Dunford's got it back in the neutral zone for Delaware. Bryce Litke, he'll fire in from the red line and the Thunder will chase. Back behind the goal scorer, Vladimir Port initially got to it, but then Kalinin takes it away. Now Liam Little strips him of the puck and gets it to Bormanis. He fans on the initial pass, but now gets it ahead to Sedenko. Sedenko gets around Litke, but now helping out is Dunford. He's had a pretty good game tonight as he clears things out. Litke passes ahead to Kalinin. Touch pass to Demon. Demon walks in, back to Kalinin. Anton's shot is deflected to the near wall. Bryce Litke pinching in from the D spot, gets it to Demon, who will play it further along, but Port gets there for Watertown and plays it back to center. Bormanis knocks it down, and now he'll carry into the Delaware zone. He crisscrosses with Sedenko, but his drop pass goes under the stick. And now here comes Anton Kalinin back the other way for Delaware. Again, tries to skate through three defenders and nearly does it. Now gets knocked off the puck by Bormanis, and Marvin Powell will come away with it for Watertown. It's a good play by Kalina. Unfortunately, Puck never got back to his forehand, and he couldn't get it to the back of the net. Devney with a shot that's blocked aside by Pens, but the puck comes right back to him. Taylor Cutting gives him a bump. Now Pens whiffs on the clearing attempt. Finally gets it further along, but Masters can't get it by Powell at the point. 
Powell gets it back after the poke check by DeCristofaro. Devney now in the corner. They'll battle for it. Devney gets to it. Masters again tries to take it away, but can't. From the point, Marvin Powell fires one well wide. And now Charlie Penns will play it ahead. Taylor Cutting finally gets it out of the zone, but only just to the red line as he played it off Kyle Powell. And now Watertown will come back the other way. Marvin Powell off the stick of Bogzel. And I think that deflects into the netting and we'll get a stoppage of play. Puck bouncing around again early in this second period and you wonder about the ice conditions a bit as both times we've seen the bouncing puck early in periods and that's such a huge goal for Port. Obviously not one of the goal scorers on the defensive end there, but you get pucks on net. Gary, what do we say? You always say it's never a bad play to put the puck on the net. And we've seen it time and time again play itself out that way. Off the draw, Lucas, he'll just fire one into the corner. Michael Desjardins will get there first, throws it in front. And that was deflected and it goes wide. Now we get a whistle as Taylor covers up. That was Boudreaux who was looking to poke that one home and good back check on the play by Taylor Cutting kept him from getting a clean shot off. And you don't want that to be the goal from Port that at beats you if you're Delaware. I mean, it's a simple shot from the point, but when you have that drive by screen, being a former goalie, that's so tough to pick up late, especially when it's got some steam like that. Taylor Cutting clears it back to center, goes off the linesman, Evan McIntosh gets to it. And now Masters steals the clearing attempt. Masters turns, just throws it in front. It went off the skate of Marvin Powell. But luckily, no harm for Watertown as he's able to clear it back to center. Gets it into the Delaware zone. Kieran Devine plays it ahead to Dunford. Dunford looks to get out of the zone. Right on the tape, Derek Masters. He paid the price for it as well. Masters walks in, tried to throw one on net. It was deflected by Natras. Now in front, McIntosh on the backhand. Can't get it around Marvin Powell, but he gets to it in the corner. He'll play it along to Masters. Masters holds. Eric spins back the other way, but now he runs into the referee. Now we get a whistle. Watertown's gonna get called for a penalty. Oh, and then a big hit after the play by Taylor Cutting. That's gonna cost him. Like, that's just a play you can't make. You're going to the power play. The play is over. And now you're gonna cancel out the power play by hitting Boudreaux from behind. You just can't have it. And they're gonna get Cutting, and it of looks course. like Watertown's talking, trying to get more than just the minor for Taylor Cutting. Not sure though, Boudreaux played to the whistle. Yes, it was a little late. It wasn't a smart hit, but oof. <laughs> that was more than a little late. <laughs> that play was well over. Looks like we'll play four on four for a couple minutes here. And those are the kinds of things that drive a coach crazy. Because you're down a goal by good hard work on the four check. You know, Eric Masters draws a penalty and now you lose that man advantage you're gonna have to play four on four right that is 100 percent how it will go as it looked like it was going to be a two minute power play for the thunder now we'll play four on four which you might say better fits watertown with that speed they bring 15 55 to go i'm guessing we, i'm assuming it's a roughing call against cutting I'm pretty sure I just heard Charles Charlie Penns Jr. say he got a double. In my assumption, that means he'd be talking about Taylor Cutting right. because I don't think the original penalty, the hook, was a double minor. Right, so Watertown's probably gonna go to the power play here. They are, it's gonna be a two minute, the only penalty that's gonna be on the board is that two minute yep. minor for Taylor Cutting. Watertown one for two with the man advantage thus far tonight. Cutter's second penalty of the evening. The Thunder will go with Marker, Municello, Pisano, and Pens, Boudreaux, Desjardins, Lucas, Calpuzos, and Kyle Powell on the point for the Wolves. Off the draw, Watertown wins it. Calpuzos at the point, plays it off the wall to Desjardins. Michael down to the circle. Back up top, Calpuzos is shot. Traffic in front, but Taylor makes the save. Boudreaux comes away with it. Plays it back up to Calpuzos. He'll fire again off the glove of Taylor. Boudreaux gets to it in the corner. Desjardins, Calpuzos fakes the shot, gets it back to Desjardins in the circle. Calpuzos fires away again, puck deflected by Lucas. This time Taylor makes the save and leaves no rebound. 135 left on the power play. And that's just tough for the Delaware Thunder. It's a good first 25 seconds. It seemed a lot longer than that. As once again, good zone time for the Wolves. But the problem there is the penalty for Taylor cutting. It's just unacceptable at this point in the game. You're going up a man and then somehow you end up down a man. Off the draw to Cristofaro, tries to clear it out. Calpuzos keeps it in, but then his pass 
deflects off Demon, and here comes Anton Kalinin. Demon's pass goes off the skate of Calpuzos, and Desjarlais plays it safely off the wall back into the Watertown zone, where they'll look to reset for another rush. 1.15 left on the man advantage. Michael Desjarlais carries through center. He's across the blue line, and he'll wait. Throws it in the slot, but a bouncing puck. Got past Lucas, but it gets to Boudreau in the corner. Boudreau will carry it around. Plays it to Calpuzos, who's down from his point position. Now Lucas. Watertown's now set up. Kyle Powell at the point. He'll wait. Hold. Calpuzos in the circle. Fires one, and that deflected. Might have even got a little piece of iron. Gets all the way back to the blue line. Nearly a steal by Demon. Now Kalinin has it. Ahead to Genny Demon, but a bit too far to get a real good chance at it. But he'll hold now in the corner. 40 seconds left on the man advantage. He'll just play it back in behind and try to kill more power play time. Kalinin forces Boudreau. 30 seconds left now on the power play. Watertown leads 3-2. to two. Derek Boudreau will carry it back through center for the Wolves. His pass across on the stick of Devney after the deflection from Lucas. Now it's behind the net. Good work by Charlie Penns. Tried to clear it out. Nearly decapitated Evgeny Demon <laughs> and couldn't get it out of the zone. Lucas behind the net. Holds. Back to the point. Kyle Powell. To the circle to Lucas. Time running out on the power play. Powell. Wake fakes the shot and then throws a pass to Boudreau. That handcuffed him a bit. Was never able to get it on net. Now the power play's over. Simonetta comes out of the box. We're back to five on five. But Watertown keeps the puck in the zone. Boudreau battles with Pens, but Derek comes away with the puck. Now he'll spin away from Kalinin. He'll hold in the circle. Backhands it, was trying to get it to Sanstabo, but Devney stole it from him. But again, Watertown controls. Puck's loose in the corner now. Charlie Pens tries to get after it, but only gets it as far as Devney. Devney with a fancy pass to Lucas, but now Lucas has to retreat from Pisano. He'll throw it across to Port to goal scorer. Michael Desjarlais with fresh legs. Tries to skate around Charlie Pens, but he loses the puck. It's loose in the corner, though, and he gets to it first. Delaware's got some tired legs in the zone right now. Shot from the point off the blocker of Aaron Taylor. Deflects out of play, and that's a puck Coach Charlie Penns won't mind losing to a fan. No, not, to, not after today. 13-11 to go in the third period, and Delaware finds themselves down a goal, but most importantly, they killed off the penalty kill, which could have put this game away. I know 4-2, you think, oh, no, it's not away, but the way pominville has been playing, it's going to be tough to get two by him in this period. you got to find a way to tie this game up and at least get it to overtime, secure a point in this contest. Off the draw, Dunford plays it for Delaware. He'll look to carry it out of his own, skates around Bormanis. Nice pass to Marker. Marker winds and fires, and that shot's blocked by Coachman and deflects it all the way out of the zone into the netting where we'll get a face off to the left of Pommenville. And Coachman's shaking up a bit. Obviously, that marker slap shot must have stung him a good bit. It looks like uh, the equipment has a malfunction near his skate area as well. He's going to stay on the ice, but looks like something's hanging off that back skate, maybe just a piece of tape or the shot blocker. You know, Marker, normally more known for his wrist shot, he wound up and held for a moment before letting all he had get into that one. Bombs away. 12.59 left, off the draw, Watertown controls. Calpuzos will play it around. Lucas skates by Municello and is able to get it out of the zone back to center. Tries to skate around Contrato, puck poked away by Dunford, but it's loose in the corner. Bryce Litke plays it ahead, it gets back to center. Calpuzos will fire one in and it bounces on Taylor. He's able to paddle that aside. Dunford gets it to Contrato. Contrato's pass for Marker is a bit too far. And now Boudreaux gets it back the other direction. Michael Desjarlais tried to find Lucas, but the puck was bouncing a bit. Now Municello gets Contrato with speed. Brandon dropped past to Marker. Nice play by Coachman initially to get Marker off the puck. And then a pass for Municello is deflected by Michael Desjarlais, who sprawled to make the play there. Now Contrato and Marker play catch. Municello to Devine at the point. He'll fire one, and that goes wide. Marker with a side angle shot. Blocker to side by Pommenville. Backhand pass in front went through the skates of Contrato, and Lucas brings it the other way. Lucas will just chip it in deep. Aaron Taylor will hold it up there. Anthony Pisano through center, a little too far for Marker. Natras will play it now for Watertown, but he gets Kieran Devine. Devine fumbles, and now Kyle Powell carries it. Drop pass to Devney. Back to Powell in front for Bogsell. And that deflects wide. Simonetta now along the near wall. He'll battle with Devney for the puck. Devney gets it past Devine. Bogsell picks it up. But now he loses, and now Simonetta will come back the other way for Delaware. Across the blue line. Side angle shot. Saved by Pominville. 
One thing I've noticed about Simonetta, he doesn't mind shooting it from anywhere. Bogsel, drop pass to Devney. Walks into the high slot, turns, fires, and that one goes wide. Would have beat Taylor on the blocker's side, but it went wide. Devney gets it back. Plays it around for Bogsel. Bogsel in the corner, works into the circle. High slot, still holding. Stick work through three Delaware defenders and is able to play it deep, and now he'll go for a change. Pisano is able to play it to Simonetta, and Delaware will look to come the other way with 10.50 to go. Watertown keeps applying the pressure with the lead, and some teams don't necessarily do that. They lay back a bit, but I like that from this Wolves team. You got to keep the pressure on, because if you lay back, that's when you start to give up your own opportunities. Vladimir Port plays it back to center, bouncing puck. Lucas settles it down and walks into the Delaware zone, but then he loses his edge. McIntosh plays it to DeChris DeFaro. Backhand pass too far for Simonetta. And Desjardins gets to it at the blue line, plays it to Boudreaux, takes a bump from McIntosh. Evans able to get it into the Watertown zone, but no further than Sanstabo. And now here comes Watertown. Boudreaux across the blue line to Lucas, back to Boudreaux, deflects one behind the net. The Delaware defender loses his feet and is down behind the net. That's Penns. Now walking in front is Boudreaux with a shot, and Taylor makes the save. Loose puck behind the net, McIntosh plays it ahead for Eric Masters. He's checked from behind by Boudreaux and loses the puck, but it does clear to center. Well, it could have been a couple penalties on the Wolves there. High stick on to Cristofaro and the trip on Pens. Both go undetected. I understand it's late in the third, but the trip on Pens pretty blatant. 9.45 to go. Devney walks into the Delaware zone on the pass from Boudreaux. Good poke check from Dunford, and now he gets it to Evgeny Demon. Demon looks to skate around Kyle Powell. He's across the red line, gets it to Municello. Thomas fans on the shot, and now Devney off the wall for Bogsel a bit too far, and Bryce Lickie gets to it for Delaware. 9.25 for Delaware to right the wrongs in this third period thus far. They need one to tie this game up, and they're starting to push now. Kalinin's pass a little too far for Municello. Coachman will get to it for Watertown. He'll backhand it over to Calpuzos. Now it's Devney. Joe throws it back to center. Bounces over the stick of Litke and nearly set up Bogsel with a break who got in front of Dunford, and now they'll fight for the puck behind the net. Dunford and uh, Bogsel had their sticks kind of tangled. And Dunford's able to kick it ahead. Now Municello's pass for Kalinin's too far. He'll battle Coachman behind the net. Justin will play it around the boards. Devine keeps it in at the blue line. Evgeny Demon in the slot. Municello with a shot in Pominville. Makes the save, and as it's been all night, it's one and done as he holds that right against the breadbasket. And with 8.45 to go in the third, we'll get our media timeout with the Wolves leading 3-2. to two. Another good chance to score for Municello, and it just seems like tonight he's snake bitten. But I do think Municello will get the tying goal tonight. My, I'll try my clairvoyancy again here. I don't recall if it worked the first time. I don't think they did score on that power play, did it they? It did not work the first time. But as my mother always told me, if at first you don't succeed, never give up. I'll keep trying. There you go. <laughs> well, 8.45, plenty of time in a hockey game. All you need to score a goal is one second. It's that simple. That's all you need. And the way Delaware's been pushing back a lit, pushing back a little bit, you know it's going to come. The chances are going to come. But Commonville's been so good, are they going to be able to get one past them? You've been enjoying watching the action tonight on our YouTube channel or at DelawareThunder.com or FederalHockey.com. Don't forget, tomorrow night's first responders night. We will celebrate and honor policemen, fire, EMS, men and women that wear the uniform that are the first to answer the call. It's your night tomorrow night. Special jerseys, as Mike's mentioned, they're going to be up for auction starting at the end of the game tonight. You can start your bidding tonight. How do folks make those bids again, Mike? They make them on live source. You can download the app on your smartphone, either your iPhone or your Apple Android. Uh, smart for your Apple or your Android. My apologies, I have an Apple phone, so I don't know what that Android life is about. But right. if you have that, don't worry, you can still get involved in the festivities. Lucas lofts a puck into the center ice. Formanis over skates, McIntosh plays it back in deep. We'll have special pregame ceremonies tonight, or tomorrow night as well, to celebrate first responder night. It all starts 7 o'clock. Tickets available, DelawareThunder.com. Formanis now in the Delaware zone, tries to get around Pisano. Anthony holds him up, and Kieran Devine comes away with the puck, and he'll play it ahead to Eric Masters. Masters, cross-ice pass, eludes Taylor Cutting. He's able to backhand it in, but Marvin Powell knocks that uh, dump-in attempt. Here comes Watertown the other way. Devney doesn't mind just playing it in deep, letting some time run off the clock. Aaron Taylor plays it around the wall, but finds Marvin Powell instead of a teammate. Pens and Bormanis battle behind the net. Puck still loose. Devney into the fray as well. 
Sound like Bormanis went hard into the backboards, but Devney comes away with the puck. He skates away from Contrato, but loses the puck. But now he steals it from Taylor Cutting, and now Cutting's gonna go off again, this time for tripping. So the Wolves will go back to the power play as Taylor Cutting heads back to the box. Been a rough night for Taylor Cutting. He spent a lot of time in the penalty box, and that one can't complain much about as it was a trip as he turned over the puck in the defensive zone. So as you mentioned earlier in the period, when Watertown had a chance with the man advantage, could really kind of put this game away with 7.38 to go. A two goal advantage would be a tough mountain to climb for the Delaware Thunder. Right, this is the uh, most important couple minutes of the game here. You got a kill, you can gain some momentum off the kill. Watertown officially one for three tonight on the power play. Boudreaux off the draw, pucks in skates, but they're able to get it back to the point. Michael Desjardins walks into the circle, holds, shot from the blue line, blocker to side by Taylor, and the clearing attempt by Contrato goes back to center ice, Calpuzos will play it there. Gets it to Desjardins, Michael walks into the Delaware zone, stops and holds, pressured by Contrato, gets it to Calpuzos, who backhands it back to Desjardins. Kind of crisscross with Boudreaux. Galpuzos faked the shot, tried to get it to Powell, but the puck was airborne. And now Markers will be able to clear it all the way down. 120 left in the man advantage. It's been a good kill thus far for Delaware. Everything's been on the outside when it's been in the zone, and it's already been sent the distance twice. Galpuzos will carry ahead for Watertown now with Marker trailing. Bormanis walks in, holds, fires the shot, goes off the glove of Taylor. And high over the net, into the corner, Kieran Devine's able to clear it back out. And now Ryan Marker looks to pick it up. He fumbled it initially, but gets it back. Works on the back end of the forehand, a shot. Pominville made the save. I don't think he realized it was in his blocker. And he's able to just play it to the corner. And now Watertown comes back the other way. 45 seconds left on the power play. Bogsel will go to the corner. He's worked off the puck by Devine, but Bormanis gets there. Bormanis to Sanstabo at the point. Kyle Powell holds. Sanstabo walks in, fires a shot, and that deflects over Taylor. And Evgeny Demon tries to clear it, but Devney knocks that down. Puck loose in the slot, Daniel DeCristofaro. This time he'll get it out. Kalinin to Demon, two on two. Anton Kalinin back to Demon in the circle. He'll hold. Evgeny Demon reverses. 15 seconds left on the power play. DeCristofaro with a shot, that's blocked by Lucas. And now he comes back the other way for Watertown. Backhand pass, Boudreaux throws it to Sanstabo in front. Save Aaron Taylor. Puck bounces in front, still loose. Sanstabo gets it back for Watertown. Power play about to come to an end. As Cutting leaves the box, we're back to five on five. Little behind the net, throws one in front. That deflects to the far wall and will go back to center. Simonetta loses the race with Natris, but Kalinin picks it up for Delaware. He'll walk in, fires a shot. Might have got the blocker of Pominville there, but Simonetta gets to the rebound. He'll turn and walk into the circle. Tried to throw one in front. Natras deflected that one. Now Dunford with a big slap shot and Pominville's able to make the save and hold on. 5-12 left. Watertown leading 3-2. Well, that's where Pominville's so good. He comes way out of the crease, forces Dunford to take a shot that he has absolutely nowhere to shoot. And if Dunford maybe picks the head up just a quick second, looks cross ice, you throw it off a skate, it ends up in the back of the net. But unfortunately there for the Thunder, Pominville... Got the better at Dunford. Yeah, he's been good tonight. 5-12 left here in the third period. Marker on the draw with Boudreaux. Derek wins another into the corner, though. Coachman gets there, but it's too far for Lucas. Dunford holds at the blue line, throws one towards the net, and Pominville calmly snatches that out of the air, and he'll hold for another faceoff. Well, time is not Delaware's friend right now. 5:04 to go in the final frame here. Delaware's hoping it is not the final frame. Hoping to see some overtime for the first time this season. We thought we were going to see some overtime, obviously, in Carolina. Obviously, that one ended heartbreaking for the Delaware Thunder. Tonight, they could possibly break the hearts of the Wolves here. 21 saves on the night for Pominville. The Wolves have outshot Delaware 36-23. to Off the draw, Marker keeps it in just inside the blue line, but Coachman will get to it behind the net. He'll backhand it along for Devney. Devney's drop pass nearly came to Municello, but instead... Calpuzos is able to play along further. No icing here. Litke will play for Delaware. 4.40 to go. Municello looks to break out. Cross the red line. Skates around Devney. Walks into the circle. His shot goes wide. Just under the glove of Pominville. Marker holds at the blue line. But Calpuzos will carry it back out for Watertown. Cross the red line. He'll just fire one in on Taylor. Aaron gloves it down. 
He'll paddle it to Bryce Litke. 4.20 to go as the Let's Go Thunder chant starts from a pretty good crowd here at Thunderdome, but now it's an offside play. Devney thought he picked the pocket, but it must have just crossed the blue line. Did just snuck over to the other side there. 4.18 to go. And Monticello, we talked about it. He creates some space for himself, got to the slot, just fired it a bit wide there, though, as the puck was humming just wide of the net. The Demon Kalinin Simonetta line, which has been pretty good tonight, goes against Boudreau Lucas Desjarlais. Another faceoff win for Boudreau. He's been phenomenal on the dot. Pisano will play for Delaware. Kieran Devine holding behind the net. Again, Watertown still applying a little bit of pressure, still holding that one goal lead. But Simonetta looks to skate through. He does, now played in behind. Trying to get to Kalinin, but the puck comes to Desjardins. It's in skates, Demon can't control. Here comes Boudreau. Across the red line. Tries to work around Kieran Devine. That's good defensive work by the Delaware D. And now Kenny Demon is able to play it ahead to Kalinin. Kalinin's pass eludes Simonetta. That didn't clear the zone either, so this play's still on side. As Pisano will backhand it ahead of Devine. Watertown will go for a change. Kalinin on the stretch pass from Devine. Skates across the blue line around Desjardins. Walks into the high slot. Now he loses the puck, and he goes down. No call, however. Fans wanted a trip. I think Kalinin did, too. I don't know that he should have had one. Lucas played pretty good D there. Now they fight for it in the corner. Simonetta gets it to Kalinin. Puck loose comes to Calpuzos. Not able to clear, though. DeCristofaro knocks it down. His shot's deflected by Lucas. Calpuzos will try again, and this time he does get it to the red line. Charlie Penns plays it to Anton Kalinin. Three minutes left. Delaware trailing three to two. Kalinin and Penns play catch as Kyle Powell plays a little bit of pressure on the Delaware captain. But he's able to get it to Municello, but now a steal by Devney. Into the circle. Tries to skate through Penns. Good poke check there by the captain. And Marker holds for Delaware, 2.40 to go. Now he'll skate through the neutral zone, looking to make something happen for the Thunder. Goes around behind the net, throws it in front, pucks loose, now we're gonna get a penalty. As down went Municello, they're gonna get Bogzel for the trip. So with 2.32 to go and trailing by a goal, the Thunder are gonna go to the power play. Well, you can't ask for a more exciting finish than this, 2.32 to go. It's gonna be a two minute power play for the Delaware Thunder. I'm curious to see when Aaron Taylor will head out of the net here. It'll be interesting. I think a lot of that will probably have to do with the first maybe 30 to 45 seconds of this man advantage. I would say so as well. The Thunder will go with Demon, Marker, Contrato, Pisano, Pens. And Pisano's just going to park in front of the net, and I think that's a great spot for him. Someone's not happy. No. Nope. <laughs> Kyle Powell is not happy at all. Off the draw. Delaware won it initially, nearly cleared by Lucas, but Marker kept it in at the point, but on a second effort, Lucas is able to get it back to center. Charlie Pence has to retreat for it. Thunder 0 for 1 on the power play tonight, only scoring at an 18% clip on the year with the man advantage. Ryan Marker through center, across the blue line, holds at the circle, he'll throw it behind. Brandon Contrato gets to it there. He'll backhand it ahead for Evgeny Demon. Demon's pass is deflected. Contrato plays it further, and now Demon will walk from behind the net. Around in the corner. Looks like the Thunder can get set up now. Marker back to Demon at the point. Demon to Pens. Pens plays it further, but a little too high for Contrato. Justin Coachman gets to it and is able to clear it all the way down. 1.12 to go. Aaron Taylor passes it to Ryan Marker. Now Evgeny Demon takes a stick right off the helmet. And we are going to get a call for the high stick, so all of a sudden, it's going to be a five on three for a minute five. Well, this is absolutely huge. You know it's going to be a six on three, but I would not pull Aaron Taylor just yet. Not yet, 1.37 to go. The faceoff's likely to come just outside of the Watertown blue line. Maybe a good time for the timeout, though, by Coach Penns. And I think he took it. So a minute five left on the minor to Kyle Powell. High sticking is the call against Michael Desjardins. And that's, it's, it's unfortunate for Watertown because that's an inadvertent high stick on Desjardins, but definitely the right call. Right. And it really gives an opportunity for the Thunder to try to cash in and tie this game. Yeah, I mean, it's a five on three. It's going to be a six on three. The only problem that scares me always with the six on three is that, you know, the bouncing puck. All they have to do is take one whack at it. Right. A lucky bounce, it's in the back of the end at the other end. Well, you know, you got the five on three. Especially when you're on the kill and you don't have to worry about icing. Absolutely not, right. Taylor in the net for now. 
best guess if this gets down to a minute and it's still a 3-2 game? I would start looking earlier. a bit under a minute, I think. Okay. I, I, just with the five on three, you already got the two-man advantage. You got a minute five of that. There's only a minute 37 left. Right. Obviously, on a five on three, you want to score well before a minute five seconds. So we'll see what the Thunder could do here. Key here is going to be the faceoff. Demon and Boudreaux, and Boudreaux has been phenomenal tonight, wins another one. But Watertown can't get it out. Ryan Marker walks in from the point, fires a shot. And it was well high, and it hits the netting behind the net. I don't believe that was deflected. So I'm curious as to, well, maybe the maybe Coachman did get a stick on it. Well, Marker had Pisano go into the net with his stick down. I would have loved to see him leave that on the ice and let Pisano go to work there in front. Another chance for Demon on the draw with Boudreaux. If Genny wins this one, Marker at the point. Holds across. Kalina with a shot and a great glove save by Pominville. Man, that left-handed mitt has been really good tonight for the Watertown netkeeper. And Anton Kalinin's got a good shot. That was buzzing to the front of the net as Pominville gloved it down. 51 seconds to the five on three. Taylor still in the net, way out at the hash marks though. Demon wins another draw. Pisano can't get to it, but Marker does. Ryan walks in from the circle to play it to Demon. Demon back to Marker. Collapsing things down. Pominville getting pummeled by Pisano. He slashes Pisano in front. Not a thing to do, not a smart Marker thing. fires, shoulder save, puck loose in the slot, and a good clear by Coachman, as Aaron Taylor will get to it. 25 seconds now on the man advantage. We're under a minute to play in the third period. There goes Thunder Taylor. looking for the equalizer. It'll now be a six on three for the next 20 seconds. Kalinin's got the puck. Municello joins the fray. Pens down low. Municello to Demon with a shot, and it goes wide. Kalinin now. Eight seconds on the six on three. Kalinin walks in, fires. That shot's blocked by Pominville. Loose in the circle. Boudreaux is able to clear it all the way down. 30 seconds left. Kyle Powell racing with Municello. Thomas gets to it first. 25 seconds to go. Thunder trail by one. They've got six on the ice. Watertown has four. Municello plays it behind the net. Kalinin throws it in front. Missed Demon, but got pens. Marker now in the circle. He'll play it behind. 10 seconds left. Kalinin, back to Marker. Marker with a backhand pass. Pens, fires from the blue line, deflected in front. It's just sitting in the, loose in the slot. And finally, it's kicked free to the far corner. That's going to bring us to the end of the third period. The Watertown Wolves will survive with a 3-2 win, mainly on the back of Jeremy Pominville, who made spectacular save after spectacular save, especially in those final three minutes. Yeah, and unfortunately for Delaware, they push, they push, they push. But like we said, Pominville was absolutely phenomenal. You said it, nail on the head. Pominville was more than good tonight. He is the main reason this Wolves team won. He was great. And you know, it's, it's good. This was a good old fashioned hockey game. Had some good physicality, but nothing that got crazy out of hand. Both teams with some great chances. Both goaltenders made some really good saves throughout the night. And you know, unfortunately, a wild bounce on a shot from the blue line ultimately is the game winner for Watertown as Vladimir Port will get the game winning goal for the Wolves, snapping a three game losing streak. Right, and it's unfortunate. It's a shot from the point that nine out of 10 Aaron Taylor has, even with the screen there in front. Unfortunately tonight it wasn't good. It wasn't there for him. He played a phenomenal game once again, Aaron Taylor. Hats off to him as every night Aaron Taylor comes to play in this league. So the Watertown Wolves snap their three game losing streak. The Thunder now have lost three in a row. Your goal scorers for tonight, Ryan Marker scores his 29th of the season. Uh, Anton Kalinin scores his 13th for Watertown. Derek Boudreaux scored his 19th. Michael Desjardins his seventh. And the game winner from the defenseman, Vladimir Port, his first goal of the season gives the Watertown Wolves the victory. Now don't forget, tomorrow night we're gonna be right back here. First responders night, it's gonna be a real special night, not just for hockey, but to honor those men and women that don the uniform that answer the call of emergency when most of the rest of us would be turning in the other direction. We'll have special pregame ceremonies tomorrow night, including the Delaware State Police Color Guard, which will be on hand for our national anthem. We're gonna have a special pregame prayer and Harrington Police Chief Norman Barlow will drop the ceremonial first puck tomorrow night as well. You're not gonna wanna miss it in person right here, DelawareThunder.com. And of course, if you can't make it out, of course, we will be live here on our YouTube channel, which you can always find the links at DelawareThunder.com and at FederalHockey.com. 
For Mikey Basile and the rest of the crew that brings you Delaware Thunder Hockey, our final score once again, Watertown three, Delaware two. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. I'm Gary Schofield. Happy hockey, my friends, and we'll see you back here at Thunderdome tomorrow.